This program contains adult content. Hey, is there a God? A uh, big atheist. Really? What, am I an idiot? Come on. But yes, it would be nice if you could throw your sins and your responsibilities on someone else. Oh, but it's not true. It looks like far left lunacy. I don't believe that it's true that religion is moral or ethical. You don't need to follow anybody! It's not human intelligence! If someone doesn't value logical consistency, what logical argument are you going to give them that will demonstrate that they should? Welcome to the Godless Revolution. Today is Friday, September 8th. This is episode 172. I'm Dan Ellis. Ryan Duffy's back in the studio with us this week. Fuck were, yeah, Were yeah. you playing my role? You were just weren't going to say anything? Yeah. Because I was going to say your name while you said your name. Oh, shit. I'm Matt Mitchell. <laughs> <laughs> See, and I thought, okay, well, if I just say who else is here with me, then that'll just, you, then you we don't, good then to- you won't get to say, and I'm here too, <laughs> or, or, and, and me. Uh, yeah, I would just say who, who, who all else is here. And then we do whatever else, but we why, fuck it up every week. That's here. Why does my Ryan's particular here. style bother you? <laughs> it doesn't. You feel the need to control me. It doesn't. It doesn't. But I thought <laughs> you fuck with me all the time when I'm saying stuff, man. And so I was just gonna like oh, there. I got you there. Now you can't. Oh, vengeance! <laughs> what have you guys done over the last week? Fought fires. But it exciting. Yeah. <laughs> Very. Fought fires, and that's about it. It's been a busy week at, at Dugway. There's a whole fucking lot of fires There's going a, on, man. The whole state's on fucking fire. Mm-hmm. And, whole, uh, much of the West, really. Yeah, it's all on fire. Yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been crazy. Yeah. And then the other day, yeah, we're sitting out there, and there's 100... What was it? I remember we looked at the, uh, the, the weather thing, and we're like, it's 101 degrees out with 8% humidity. Today can go fuck off. Today's just begging for a fire. Yeah, two hours yeah. later, we had a fire mm. raging. And we we're still doing cleanup on that this week. Awesome. So yeah, last week's episode when you said, Ryan's probably fighting fires. You were actually right. I I was. Mm. You were out playing with hoses and squirting Actually, things. playing with fire. I, I laid the longest uh, back burn I've ever done. <laughs> Fuck Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going to say something else. Well, we have these torches. These we eat a lot of burritos. <laughs> we have torches that we start fires with. Uh-huh. And I, these are the ones where you just like yeah, it's, it's, called, it's it. called a drip torch. Yeah. yeah, it's got a mixture of gasoline and diesel inside of them, and a little yeah. wick on the end of it. Yeah, yeah. We it was about a just over a mile of a line of fire that me and our guy went out and made. Cool. Yeah, it was cool. <laughs> then as you look back, like okay, there's a wall of flame. We got to hurry up. We got to hurry up. We got to hurry up. Time to get out of here now. No, just time to make more fire really fast before that fire gets to us. What? So you make a fire break with the fire because you lay the two lines of fire next to each other, mm. and they're naturally attracted to each other. That seems really oh, weird. So that's adorable. The fire's kind of you'll burn out like a good like twenty foot swath swath of area, huh. uh, and then when the big fire hits that line, it it has no nothing else to burn. No you fuel burn, to you go burn past the material there, yeah. it wants to eat up. So You've you created create, a barrier. Yeah. yeah. So that's why we do that. Hmm. But you got to do it before the fire gets to you, or else it's just going to go right the fuck around. Why is it naturally attracted to yeah, each other? I think it's just the, the heat. warm air moving. I think, it's, and... I think it's the heat pulling towards each other. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, yeah, because it would be sucking oxygen from around, right? Yeah. So. And one, one side of the line is usually on a side where it can't burn any further that way, mm-hmm. or burn any further, like on a road or on a, on a small ditch or something that it will naturally not burn across. Mm. Then the other side, they'll just kind of burn toward each other. It works. That's all I know. <laughs> well, okay, that that was a crucial bit of information. There's a barrier all the way along one side of the firewall that it can't go past. It can go so past. So, of course, it goes toward the other so fire. It's the only way it can when, go. When, yeah. when, when we light it, it's a little fire. When you got right, a fire right, with right. a lot of energy behind it, like that's like 10 feet tall coming at you, that will jump that barrier. Sure. Yeah, okay. Jump across the road or something like that, where we fire a small fire on that, mm. it won't. It's not big enough. It's not carrying enough uh, energy or heat with it to jump that that road. Gotcha. Mm. Or small path or a small trail. Or we just do a a wet line where we make it really wet in an area and it won't burn past that wet part while we're dropping the water on it. Well, I told you all of 84 when I went to go golfing was all burned out. Um, And 
I know that there's always a shit ton of wind coming in and out of that canyon, so that's got to make it, it really hard. I remember really hard, when I yeah. saw it on the news that morning, seeing that wind and people trying to keep their hats in their head. I'm like, they're fucked. Yeah. I'm like, that's going to run like crazy. Well, they, I mean, they have, they have permanent signs on either side of the canyon entrance that says high wind warning. Yeah. And I mean, the, they're just signs there all the time because it's always really fucking yeah. windy there. So any fire set in that canyon is just going to yeah. spread. It doesn't crazy. give a fuck about the highway. It'll jump right across yeah. that in a second. Oh yeah, well, and it did. I yeah, mean, and some of those houses that were up there that looked like, like, just turned into torches, where the whole houses were just gutted. Oh yeah, multi-million dollar homes yeah. just gone, burned to the ground. They still got a swimming pool. <laughs> 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 like the swimming well, pool was fine. You gotta look on the brighter side. <laughs> of The life. rest of the house was rubble and ashes, but just, they've got a swimming pool. Just a just you a swimming the pool. Party. And then 50 yards away is a freestanding fireplace. Yeah. <laughs> still lit. <laughs> uh, what'd you do, Matt? Um, Not a whole lot of anything interesting. My fucking Patriots shit the bed last night, so. I heard that. Oh, no. Who did they play? The Chiefs at home. Hmm. Chiefs at home and New England lost. Was it a close game? Um, Yeah, it was close for most of the game. <clears throat> but. I am not encouraged about the way their defense looks. I mean, they spent a lot of money getting Stephon Gilmore and a couple other guys, uh, you know, still retain Malcolm Butler at corner. And we'll put it this way. If you don't know who Alex Smith is, he's a quarterback that's been in the league a long time. He's not going to really lose you any games because he controls the ball really well. He doesn't turn the ball over, but he's not a, a real electrifying player. He's usually good for 160, 200 so yards, he's, maybe. He's a smart player with a lot of experience. Yeah, and he's very consistent, uh, but he's never like dynamic. He he's had not an Aaron Rodgers. He had 350 yards last night in oh, the wow. air. So that's a good game. Very unusual for him. Hmm. Big night. Patriots can't stop anything. Couldn't stop the run. <laughs> I mean, and to be fair, the Chiefs have a, a wide receiver in Tyreek Hill who can almost keep up with Usain Bolt. Oh wow. really? He runs a four three forty. That's fast. But anyway, yeah. So, hmm. uh, I've just been super busy with work and other atheist shit. We had an atheist of Utah board meeting uh, that went pretty well. We were very productive. Got a, got through a lot of shit. We had our end of summer picnic on Sunday at Murray Park that was very well attended. Had to roust some people out of the pavilion we had, uh, we had rented fucking hooligans ahead of time. Well, and luckily we showed up super early, like two hours before the event was supposed to start so that we could just get everything set up, you know, set up the merchandise tables and get the coals going, unpack everything, set up all the food, all that, and got there and there were people already in the pavilion unpacking their stuff. They had charcoal briquettes out. They were just about to throw them on the grills and light them up. And I was like, you know, Kevin and I <laughs> unpack in the truck. We take like two, two loads back and forth from the truck to the pavilion. And these people are just like looking at us, you know, every time we come into the pavilion and just drop stuff off. Cause we're putting it right on the table where they've got their stuff already, yeah. you know, just setting down our bins and everything. And on like the, I think it was the third trip into the pavilion. I finally just turned to him. I'm like, Hey, awesome. Are you guys with atheists of Utah? Uh, and they're like, uh, no. I'm like, oh, well, yeah, we've got the whole pavilion reserved today. So what are you doing here? Yeah, <laughs> this is, this is our spot. And they were just like, oh, well, oh yeah, we didn't know. So you guys reserved it. Did you, so you paid for it and you have it for the day? And I'm like, yeah. Took another trip back to the truck, came back and set some more stuff on the truck. And another lady came walking up and one of the people who was already there in the group mentioned to this woman as she came into the pavilion, oh, these guys, you know, they have the pavilion rented for the day. And she's like, they got any paperwork? Oh. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, it's on the fucking sign sitting out here in front of the pavilion. I didn't say fucking, but I said, <laughs> yeah, it's on the sign out here. And she's just like, oh. And she was kind of snotty, but then everybody else was really nice about it. Like, you know, I was just like, yeah, sorry. You know, we've, we've got the entire pavilion yeah. reserved for the full day. We paid for it. Um, and you know, so Kevin and I were just unloading the truck still. And then as they were leaving, oh, two or three of them were like, Hey, sorry. I think they felt a little bad for like, how, like mama's kind of a bitch. Yeah. She, she was kind of out of line. She was kind of being mean. So sorry. You guys have a good day. 
They were cool. I, I, I mean, I kind of feel bad rousting them out of there, but at the same time, you, we reserved it, you know, weeks in advance. Yeah. We paid for it. Mm-hmm. We, it's, we did you, it you for all day long. You went to the right channels to reserve yeah. it. Yeah. And they thought, hey, we're just going to use this today. Yeah. Just we'll show up and squat and it doesn't matter. Yeah. Rule of law and civil society be damned. We're going to do whatever the fuck <laughs> we want. It's chaos. Yeah, they probably voted Trump. <laughs> Bunch of fucking anarchists and libertarians. <laughs> Come on, man. Uh, but yeah, that went really well. Had a big turnout. We, we, uh, had s- Sunday Oasis, not Sunday, Sunday Assembly. Yeah. There's a, bu- there's a bunch of secular groups around here. There's Sunday Assembly. There's Oasis. There's, there's like, Salt Lake Oasis and then Southern Valley Oasis or something like that. But we had Sunday Assembly co-sponsor with us. Uh, they brought all of the fixins for the, nice. for the, uh, hamburgers, you know, tomatoes and yeah. lettuce and pickles and all of them, the condiments and shit. Bacon. It was a little frustrating because they showed up late. Uh. So we had, we had all this, all the, you know, we'd, we'd been cooking burgers and dogs and everything. And it's like, Where's the fixins? There's no condiments here. You, we can have a bun and a slab of meat. Have fun with that. But no, they got there just in the nick of time. So nice. it worked out well. Um, kids all had a fun. They had summer brought stuff for them to do water balloons and shit like that. Yeah, it, it was a good time. And we'll do it again next year. That's pretty much it aside from work and editing the show. Luckily, I didn't have to edit it twice this week. Yeah, <laughs> that was that was good. That's it for me. All right. This is Matt Dillahunty, and you're listening to the Godless Revolution. Please stand by. The Godless Revolution will continue in a moment. Hey, everybody! We're the Utah Outcasts, and we want you to listen to our show. We're a rowdy bunch, super liberal atheists that reside in the state of Utah who bring you current events and featured content on a semi-weekly basis. Whether it's us poking fun at the religious right or ranting at the world in which we all reside, we want to borrow your ears for about an hour twice a week. Hey, and don't forget to tell them the best part about it. Oh, yeah. The show's free for all. It is indeed. So if you like free, we're available through iTunes, Overcast, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Spreaker, Google Play, Patreon, and even in full HD video via YouTube. Give us a listen. You won't be sorry. Thanks for listening. Now back to the show. We have a What Matters. We do. Oh, I'm excited. You said you spent quite a while on this. Uh, pretty much all week. That's why I don't have... Yeah. And, and you seem a little nervous about this one, too. Not nervous. Not nervous about it. Okay. I'm just curious what the response will be. That's all. Mm, That's how it will be received. Be yeah, exactly. Uh, all right. What matters? Black lives. I hear that they matter. <laughs> so I, I haven't actually taken this head on, and it's definitely way overdue. Uh, stick with me here. This is a lot to say. Okay. Do you, do you want the occasional feedback, or do you want to get through it? Um, yeah, you can. That's okay. fine. Okay. All right. Uh, following the example of my friend Taylor Grin, I do not wish to encourage infighting. There are still very important issues we need to come together and solve. Uh, but, at times, corrections must be made, especially when the community, which includes me, is unnecessarily chastised, and done so without the appearance of having done any research whatsoever on the topic in question. And no, I will not be taking some imaginary position from the hard middle, referring to David Smalley's censoriously toned condemnation of the left, more specifically, the progressive wing of American politics, which has long been David's mistress. She's the one he longs to be with at times, but also publicly distances himself from. She's the more attractive one, who gets along with all of his friends, but ultimately he goes home every night to his long-term relationship, the plain-looking but comfortable wife, the moderate right. You may think that my use of moderate right is hyperbole. Nope. I'd say it's actually pretty generous, in fact. Consider the Overton window shift to the political right we've experienced as a society over the last decade. The rise of the Tea Party 10 years ago, which shifted politics into positions that were formerly held only by the extreme right wing. And Trump has now ushered in the alt-right, an even more fringe uh, group that makes the Tea Partiers like Paul Ryan and Ted Cruz 
the run of the mill Republicans. Combine that with the already moderate center left Democrats currently in office who lack any real progressive fortitude and tend to roll over for the wishes of the GOP, see Neil Gorsuch. And I think a case could be made that attempting to find an intermediary position between the alt right and the establishment left would place you somewhere nearer to the Tea Party than the moderate right. So there's that. Mm hmm. Yeah, everything has shifted way fucking far right. Indeed. I don't like being put in the position of engaging with infighting, but David put himself up for rebuttal by publicizing his article and tweets. Dan led me to Thomas Smith's takedown of the article on serious inquiries only. Which was beautiful. Yeah, that was that was awesome. Thomas's show was awesome. If, if All of any his of shows. Our, yeah, yeah, serious inquiries only, um, comedy, comedy shoe shine and uh, opening arguments. Opening argument. I can't. I don't know why that is so hard for me to remember. But all three of those shows are awesome. You, if you're not listening to those and you're a fan of our show, you should definitely check them out. I'm sure you'll like them even more. <laughs> right. Yeah. But please come back to us at the end of the day. <laughs> uh, so one tweet in particular set me off. A digital waterfall of arrogance and condescension into the lake of atheist leftists. And I quote, Want to know a secret? Nazis and Antifa are both hate groups who want to control you with violence. The wise avoid extremes. Uh, disclaimer, I do not wish for anyone to stop listening to David Smalley, nor do I encourage anyone to stop supporting him if you so choose. We're in a community of atheists and skeptics where views are diverse, and many of us expect to be corrected. He has expressed his opinion, this is mine. Yeah, and uh, I mean, different strokes for different folks, man. People listen to different things, they have different opinions. Mm -hmm. We should have a big tent, but... I don't know if many of our listeners saw my post about uh, David Silverman's speech that he made at the convention this year, but it was it was a great speech talking about you know atheism and the atheist movement we want to make and create as big a tent as possible, include as many voices as possible, be a diverse group of people, but there is no fucking room for Nazis, white supremacists, racists, homophobes. Mm -hmm. Xenophobes, transphobes, anybody who wants to demean a minority group, our tent is too small for you. You yeah. can get the fuck out. Right. Now, David Smalley won't be the focus of my piece, but he will feature throughout as the metaphoric figurehead for all the voices with similar views and his ill-considered tweet and armature article that sounded, <laughs> that sounded like a string of all his favorite memes in print form got me thinking somewhat more deeply about the overarching issues that led to them. Race, and where I differ from Smalley and those who share his views. To say that neo-Nazi fascists who seek at best racial division are the same as the people who oppose them, simply because both groups represent the wings of different political parties, is a very juvenile evaluation of the situation. It seems to only take into account what was seen on TV about Charlottesville and Berkeley. So allow me to build an actual case against this false equivocation. And I'll start with the foundation. Recognition by whites that the system and the principles of this country are inherently racist, and centuries of inexcusable wrongs have come of it. This is a simple start that's been greatly overlooked. It's the admit you have a problem step, the very first thing, and whites as a whole aren't even there yet. This may seem like a flimsy, even unnecessary place to start. But just imagine how difficult it would be to live under oppression by an author authoritarian system. No white libertarians paying taxes does not count. Imagine overt and indirect stares, comments, and jokes. Lower acceptability for education and jobs based on skin color. Higher rates of policing and enforcement. Now add disproportionate jail time and maximum sentencing. Also, the higher rates of penalty and incarceration lead to the denial of the right to vote for felons. Yes, that's true for all Americans, but the rates of conviction are not. It's the long shadow of the three-fifths law, and society is saying, no, everything is fine. Sometimes it's in those exact words, but often it's disguised in the form of all lives matter, or Antifa and Nazis are the same. The message, even if done from a place of shallow thinking or ignorance, is heard loud and clear. You're anti-Nazi, so point for you. But you're also anti-anti-fascist, so fuck you. Oops, I forgot to mention, we use big boy words here. <laughs>
Ambivalent responses like this contribute to the feeling of hopelessness that issues of race will ever get solved, and it provides tacit support for the offenders. Is it really too difficult to give minorities a measure of sanity on this? Yes, racism is real. Yes, it's institutional. Yes, it's being perpetrated by white people. Perpetuated by white people. And perpetrated. If you feel yourself tightening up uh, inside upon hearing that, especially the last point. Feel may- your butthole puckering. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just reflect on, uh, on that and determine the source of your discomfort. Do you have a legitimate argument that I'm missing? Let me know. Or is it that you're the beneficiary of being on the privileged side of the system and don't like the idea that it could be this corrupt? We need to sort that out before the walls of progress can be erected. And I don't mean progress like electing another Obama, although that would certainly help right now, but I mean bringing up the average black situation to the level of average whites in this country. And we're nowhere near that. But until we can admit there's a deficit, we won't reach equality. If you claim to be equality proponents, and you can't even say that racism is a problem in the critical moments, don't you dare act surprised that we can't agree on statues or flags. This is a fight against conservatism, largely, not the party, the philosophy. And as I said last week, the heart of conservatism is the deep fear that something somewhere might change. A catchy one-liner that isn't intended to represent the breadth of the ideas therein, but it captures the general mood. Here's an example. Bicycles. What's the big deal? Can either of you guys think of a reason to oppose bicycles? Because it's it represents just a binary thing, (laughs) two wheels, and it hurts my testicles. Hurts your nuts, yeah. Bicycle, that's wrong. (laughs) Bicycle, bicycle should be unicycles only. Well, in 1912, when bikes were invented, conservatives did have some concerns, and not reasonable ones either. Listen to the -the over-the-top language expressed in this anti-bike ad called The Awful Effects of Velocipeding. (laughs) Velocipeding? That sounds like when you pee at a high rate of speed. I was going to say, tricycles are right out as well. That's too (laughs) many. Quote, The thousands of young men and women joining the host of desecrators, betrayed by the allurements of a Sunday wheeling, is alarming. Close quote. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Okay, that's how conservative reacts, conservatives reacted to bikes. New is not really their thing. <laughs> Are we surprised that getting them to loosen their grip on privilege has been so difficult? I'm scared and there's wolves after me. <laughs> <laughs> so let's take a little bit of a deeper dive. There's an interesting barrier to all of the aforementioned issues as well. Being told mostly, if not entirely, by other white people that I'm not allowed to speak on issues of race in this country. Yes, I am. And here's why. Firstly, I'm not saying that I understand what minorities are going through. That is something I can't speak to. But I can and should discuss the problems I see from my perspective. We cannot allow the neo-Nazi alt-right to have a monopoly on white people discussing race in this country. There actually is a benefit for everyone if we all take part in this. Consider this analog. Islam must be reformed from within. Why would Muslims listen to atheists or Christians about the problems with Islam? We understand and accept this while speaking out against the horrors, and we do it while working with any insiders who are willing. And so it is with institutional racism, set up for and perpetrated by whites in this country. And we have a role and a responsibility to not only accept that, but to write it from within. Okay, so let's talk about the role of moral licensing in all of this. If you don't know, it's the idea that after doing something good or progressive, we give ourselves a sort of permission to walk it back a few steps. Uh, Example, see, we can't possibly be racist. We elected Obama for two terms. Or or like Ryan's friend who posted pictures of Trump with black people and said, surely he's not a racist. Exactly. He hey, he's not afraid to hang out with black people. That doesn't mean he's so he's clearly not a racist. Yeah, we do hear this kind of (laughs) stuff all the time. Uh. After the step forward in 1863, the Emancipation Proclamation, the societal walk back was that the KKK grew from a southern town idea to a national organization, and we fell into the shameful Jim Crow era. After the Civil Rights Movement step, the war on drugs and mass incarceration of mostly black men walk back. Often with moral licensing, according to Malcolm Gladwell, we open the door for progress, usually only once, then slam it shut. 
After opening the door for Obama, electing a woman would have bucked the trend in a major way. We'd already done our charity work, our good deed. We felt justified in turning the tides. The Trump disaster is textbook moral licensing. So we can just go back to doing what we were doing before mm -hmm. because we've proved that we're not terrible exactly people. Exactly right. Okay. And here's a slight aside, too, that even conservatives in this context tacitly admit that progress is the right thing, right? So in order to feel justified yeah. in regressing, they have to acknowledge the good thing, which is what the left is doing. Yeah. Look, so, we, we, we did your thing, okay? So now we're good people still, right? So we, we allowed this thing that you wanted the to good happen. Thing. Yeah, the good thing you now, wanted to yeah. happen, we allowed it to happen. So we're good people too. Yeah. Okay. Never mind that we bitched and moaned the whole <laughs> fucking time. <laughs> so obviously Trump's election represents the step backward in society. The Muslim ban, harsher penalties for marijuana, the border wall, pardoning Joe Arpaio, Jeff Sessions' appointment, and rescinding DACA. Oh, and the unwillingness to plainly denounce Nazis. And Trump's media blackouts and scorn for honest journalism while supporting cons conspiracy and propaganda further perverts the way in which racism is viewed in, this, in America. And it's hauntingly similar to pre-civil rights America. Quote, it will make the criminal look like he's the victim and make the victim look like he's the criminal. If you aren't careful, the newspapers will have you hating the people who are being oppressed and loving the people who are doing the oppressing. Malcolm X, 1964. Malcolm X also believed, and I'm paraphrasing here, the fear of racists is that someday the blacks are going to wake up and fight and seize power. And they're afraid that in that day they'll treat the racists with the same cruelty the same tyranny, and the same subjugation and oppression with which the racists have treated the minorities. It's relevant to note that Malcolm X was murdered by many guns. Uh, one of his assassins was caught on the scene and arrested. The assassin later told officials that at least four of, of at least four other conspirators. The case was never reopened. If a major sociopolitical figure like this couldn't even get full justice from the system, what hope does the average black man have? Mm-hmm. Okay, bear with me. We're already miles ahead of the crowd who can't tell the difference between Nazis and Antifa, but we can go back even further. <laughs> a young black editor of Nashville's Fisk Herald, Herald said this, quote, We are not the Negro, Negro from whom the chains of slavery fell. Most assuredly not. We are now qualified and, being the equal of whites, should be treated as such. Had this been said today, it would be relevant, if not somewhat optimistic of the current conditions. This was said in 1889. Hmm. Wow. So for how long should we expect people to hold out hope for simple human rights and dignity? How many years? How many decades? And how many centuries? And we're surprised by the rise of the Black Panthers, the civil rights movement that included Malcolm X and MLK, and the need for Black Lives Matter? Frankly, we should only be surprised that these movements have been so patient and nonviolent. Mm -hmm. And they have made positive changes, of course, but not enough. Nowhere near enough. These movements are going to move faster and more effectively with, our, with the help of insiders. White people will need to make changes from the position of privilege. That is my justification for supporting Antifa and Black Lives Matter. Some may say, well, they aren't lynching people anymore. Okay, you're an unthinking asshole. That's the lowest possible <laughs> bar to set for equality. And if you think for a second that Richard Spencer and Trump's mob of knuckle-dragging scat spitters aren't talking about bringing it back, along with a liberal genocide, then you aren't paying enough attention to have a responsible opinion on this. Or the fact that they do still lynch people sometimes. Mm -hmm. Right. And speaking of irresponsible public positioning... I don't see anything like what I've put together here backing up the arguments of the I side with neither crowd. So exactly how did you arrive at your position? Intuition? Did you have a feeling? The whys avoid extremes? This is a blanket statement. What is the basis? Because it sounds like a failure of thought, and frankly a failure of stones as well. And it's not true across the board. Here's an analogy. You're trying to figure out the temperature, and you have two thermometers. The actual temperature is 94 degrees Fahrenheit. One thermometer reads 88 degrees and the other 84. All the wisdom of your formula would have you settle on a temperature of 86, right in the middle. But the problem, as you can plainly see now, is that avoiding the correct extreme in this case actually moves you further from the truth. 
But more than that, aggressive middling is not an appropriate replacement for I don't know. If you use your social media audience to make such bold statements as being immovably gray on issues of human rights, guess who benefits? But, 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 but this is a complex issue. No, it isn't. The question is this. Are you okay with the way things are? Yes or no? This only becomes complicated if you're trying to say yes and no, which according to some is the reasonable position. We can discuss the efficacy of Antifa and Black Lives Matter, t Black Lives Matter tactics, but that's completely separate from what they stand for. But if you want to live in the wishy-washy, I have some topic ideas for dog meh debate. <laughs> How do these sound? Because I don't like fighting, I'm not sure if black lives matter. Or I've seen some violence, so I'm uncertain about opposing fascism. Or the instant classic of reasonable middling, Charlottesville had blame on both sides. If you can't figure out the correct side of these issues, then do so, or shut your fucking mouth. Because your potential to cause real harm is non-zero. Look, speaking out is the easy part. It's literally the least we can do. What are you afraid of? You talk a big game when nothing is on the line, but once things become important, you cower behind your privilege and hinder progress. So as I see it, we have yet to fully recognize that racism is real and systemic in, this, in, in America. Yes, of course, we're all allowed to discuss it responsibly and from our roles. And we can all afford to be slightly more conscious of how moral licensing affects our progress. And I'd bet David wouldn't consider my thoughts here to be very middly. He'd have no problem picking a side on this. Hi, this is Thomas Westbrook, and I have a YouTube channel called Holy Kool-Aid, where I take topics and I break them down in five or ten minute videos, trying to give a laser-focused perspective on religion, philosophy, and science. And you are listening to the Godless Revolution podcast. The next rant will start right after this. Here follows a public service announcement for the Two Skeptical Chaps podcast. <laughs> Greetings, Americans. Over here in London, we are well aware that not all of you are loud, xenophobic, racist, sexist, religious nuts. But many of your politicians who display these frightful traits seem to be quite popular. Particularly a certain wall-obsessed, small-handed, best word using, daughter-perving, war-inciting, candy-floss-headed clown. To those of you who choose to follow such balderdash, we strongly recommend not to listen to the two sceptical chaps. It probably won't be your cup of tea. Otherwise, give us a listen. Each episode we cover any news or current affairs from across the globe. Things that annoy or delight us. That's two as in the number two. And sceptical with a K. The wrong way to spell it. Cheerio! You and the Godless Revolution will be reassimilated in three, two, one. Well, there's been a whole lot of tragedy around the world of late. We had Hurricane Harvey in the Gulf Coast that really, really fucked with Texas. Yeah. Did. Well, there goes that saying, right? Don't mess with Texas. <laughs> oh, and it's... Harvey's like, fuck you, hold my beer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, but honestly, I feel terrible for all of the people who have been affected by Harvey. We have Irma, who has decimated the island of Barbadou. Is now bearing Bar down is on it Barbuda. Barbuda. Uh, Barbuda. Barbuda. I always say that fucking wrong. I'm like Barbadou. Barbadou. I kept trying to, I was trying to talk to the board about it the other night, and, and I kept doing the same thing. I, like, I want to say Barbados or something. I don't know. Mm. Well, I think that's because Barbados is right. Barbados is going to be getting hit, too. All those islands are getting hit. Barbuda? Yeah. Uh, Barbuda, Bermuda, Barbado. They're all, they're, it's too many bars. All of the, the the yeah. Saint Kitts and Nevis, uh, the all of the little islands around there. I think you mispronounced them. Antigua, wrong I think, got hit. Haiti, mm -hmm. Haiti got hit again. Yeah. with another. I mean, they, they th that island just goes from disaster to disaster. Yeah, I mean, that just the all whole the, all the whole the, area, the whole Caribbean is getting hurricane, fucked right tsunami. Now. There, yeah, they poor those poor Haitians. Um, what we're trying to do is say that we have sympathy. And recognize that and understand that there's a lot of really tragic situations happening. And, uh, we just want to send a shout out of support and hope for, uh, the best for the people that are involved in this. Absolutely. Uh, I have 
friends in, you know, friend, Facebook friends on all of, you know, a bunch of the tiny islands in mm-hmm. Puerto Rico, in Florida, uh, people that I know in real life who live in Florida, who live in Texas, uh, who have been affected by this. I hope you're all doing well, people in Florida. I hope you are able to ride out the storm or get out of the yeah. way of the storm before it hits. Uh, thinking about y'all and hope you all are okay and we'll be able to rebuild your fine cities. I haven't been to South Florida, but I hear it's lovely. Well, my mom's supposed to go in February, but... That may not uh, happen now. Don't do it. Irma's yeah, a cunt. Gonna, ooh, <laughs> yeah. Irma's going to cunt that place up bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet that if their vacation plans get fucked, your mom would call Irma a cunt. I bet so, too, and I hope to get that. I'm, I'm going to have to record our next conversation on the phone to see if my mom calls Irma a cunt. And surprisingly, compared to Harvey, she's not a particularly wet cunt. Oh. oh. It's true. It's just, a, just a lot of air. Just, just a lot of air, yeah. Just giant. Just a giant cunt. <laughs> uh. <laughs> well, no, they, they've got Irma and then two other hurricanes uh, lined Jose up right behind her. And... I can't remember if the other one was called Behind Jose. Well, there's Katia, which is which is a tropical storm in the Gulf of Mexico that's building, okay. mm-hmm. building right now. Mm-hmm. Jose, they f- they say they're very confident will it's not make a fall. Okay. Well, Irma hopefully will suck out a bunch of energy from the warmer waters, help cool things down. And so, yeah, then the other hurricanes following in her wake won't be nearly as powerful. There was the earthquake in Mexico. Yep. At 8.2. In Chiapa. Yeah, 8.2 on the Richter scale. Which is fucking insane. I read a story just before we came down here that said there are currently 52 people confirmed dead. I can only assume that number it, it will continue rise higher. Once they start down. searching in buildings and yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, just a whole lot of shit. Have you guys seen anybody talking about, well, these are all signs of the end times I've been, now? I, oh, I'm sure they um, have. I've, I've, I've been wondering where the, the, evangelical right is on this when because they've they're they're so keen to connect meteorology to morality so well so I, I have been hearing those i have heard a few of them come Kirk out and cameron say came out and said that yep. Pat robertson came out and it's, said it's that. the the gays and the sinners and what, what 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 then why is god hitting his red states why doesn't he hit san francisco and new york we the, all know houston was full of the gays and when the old gays retire they go to south florida <laughs> they all go to Key West. Wait, yeah. <laughs> wait, do you think Jews is pronounced gays? Oh, I fucked that up again. <laughs> that was very insensitive of me. <laughs> yeah, they all go to Key West, man. Funny. That's how it, that's how uh, it happens. She doesn't look gayish. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just a shit ton of tragedy. And of course, there's a lot of right-wing lunatic religious yeah. people who are saying that this is all a sign of the end of the world and god is passing judgment and will be here any day now let's Indeed. let's see what happens there <sighs> but nothing no no it's a bunch of fucking nonsense but you had something yeah what, if we, what if we hear from one of one of one such person and sp- uh, specifically hear about this hmm. oh, does this person have a large radio show that touches a lot of listeners <laughs> is it a Catholic show? In, in, well, a, in a sense, not, yes. <laughs> little kids usually don't get radios. Oh, though. right. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, we are, in fact, talking about real-life Mr. Potato Head, Rush Limbaugh. Uh, he's created a storm of his own by suggesting that the panic caused by Hurricane Irma benefits retailers, the media, and politicians seeking action on climate change. A conspiracy so big, the actual climate is in on it, apparently. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because since you can't see the storm in the ocean, they just made computer models like they do of Earth, because Earth is actually flat. Sure. Uh, the conservative radio personality's swerve into meteorology had Al Roker, the oh, Today yeah. Show weatherman, saying Wednesday night that uh, Limbaugh was putting people's lives at risk. Uh, I yeah, think that's fair. Yeah, yeah, I think that's yeah. fair to say. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If you've got a large fucking listening audience like that and you tell them, no, oh, it's all a conspiracy, it's, no, it's no big deal, it's not going to yeah. harm anything. If, yeah, if, of course there's going to be a bunch of credulous dipshits who fucking listen to you. Right. That's your audience, dude. Yeah. yeah. If anybody has a family member down there and they say, I didn't leave Florida because Rush Limbaugh said it was fake and they die, that death's on you, Rush Limbaugh. Mm-hmm. Uh, Limbaugh's lengthy soliloquy on his radio show was apparently set off by seeing a rush on supplies of bottled water in South Florida, where he lives. 
The powerful hurricane could affect Florida by tomorrow, I guess, now is what they're talking about. Uh, yeah, by, yes. Saturday, by yeah. Saturday at the early, mm-hmm. Saturday evening. And uh, I have written in here that it would be interesting to see if Rush takes his own advice on this or if he actually leaves uh, he sa- uh, or believes what he's saying and stays in South Florida. But you yeah. said, Ryan, that he has he, already fled. He left. Yep. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so, so this makes it doubly bad, right? Now, he's saying all this shit. He knows it isn't fucking true. Yeah. Because his actions are to get a hell, the hell out of there. Uh, but yet he's still willing to, to stick to this climate bullshit, the climate denying bullshit, uh, so hard that he's willing to risk other people's lives. Yeah. What a fucking asshole. Uh, businesses that sell supplies like batteries and water prosper amid fears of an impending hurricane, he said. Quote, the media b- benefits with the panic with increased eyeballs, he said, and the retailers benefit with the panic with increased sales. And the TV companies benefit because they're getting advertising dollars for the businesses that are seeing all this attention from customers. So I'm a little bit confused about this part. Isn't Rush a capitalist purist? Yeah. What What, what does he care? Uh, you know, and uh, hasn't company- he ever sold shit on his radio show? Yeah. Why, why, uh, since when does he care about how company people profit yeah yeah exactly what, what, I, hadn't, what, I hadn't thought about what that what is he right? complaining yeah. about here yeah. are they supposed to give the stuff away for free because there's a storm coming is he going to start complaining is he going to start complaining about those corporatists now yeah i don't i don't understand his his objection to this that the media benefits with the panic okay maybe he doesn't like the media because he doesn't he is the media yeah well fuck i hate that when i hear that from these right-wing fucking assholes oh it's all the it's all the fault of the media Dude, you are the fucking media. You have a huge fucking audience yeah. on digital media. That's you, motherfucker. He makes a living just yeah. doing that. It's not a side job. It yeah. is a sole job. So retailers and TV companies, those those are the people he's complaining about that are making money profiting off what we already know he he knows is a real well, he knows this hurricane's real he left yeah yeah so he's saying he's I think what he's trying to say is that he's upset that they're trying to take advantage of a situation that isn't as extreme as they're making it sound, which clearly it is because he left. And so the other part of it is that's left is that they're profiting from what the fuck is he talking about? I don't know. I'm, I'm still curious on how TV marketers are profiting off of it. I mean, if people might watch the news more just to keep updated on the storm. Yeah. They're getting advertising dollars from the businesses that are seeing all this tension from customers. He says, I don't, I don't, I don't see the correlation with that. Uh, He said the media makes impending storms appear bigger and more dangerous than they are. Quote, these storms, once they actually hit, are never as strong as they're reported. Uh, Well, I wouldn't go that far. I know, but in the past, we've thought of storms as, oh, this isn't going to be that bad. And they become fucking horrible and a lot of people die because they weren't warned to get out in time. So now we take shit serious. Right. Uh, The constant challenge for authorities during an approaching hurricane is is persuading people to get out of harm's way. A task made more difficult by instances where storm tracks shift and predicted mayhem doesn't materialize. F- uh, Florida Governor Rick Scott urged Floridians to keep a close eye on Irma, prepare for the worst, and not ignore the evacuation order when it is issued. Okay. Yeah, our, our, so, Earth, our so, Earth science is pretty good. We can tell that this storm is going to fucking hit. Yeah, so Rush, it's it's a very bad sign when you sound less reasonable than the scaleless iguana Governor Rick Scott. Yeah. Uh. Their task is made more difficult when an influential figure like Limbaugh delivers a contradictory message. Limbaugh's voice is part of the, quote, noise of uninformed opinions that is detrimental to getting a clear message across to citizens, said Brian Norcross, senior hurricane specialist at the Weather Channel. But he's less concerned than Roker, believing that most people know that their local authorities are the most important voices to listen to in the case of impending storm and that Limbaugh is not a weather expert. Yeah, but those other people could be fake news. Mm. Uh, Norcross goes on to say, people may love Rush for his many for many things, but they're not going to ask him what the pain in their chest is all about. They're going to go to their doctor. But but are they though? I, I, I mean, don't, this pe- is precisely stupid. The kind of prob yeah, the kind of problem that Trump's war on media and fake new- fake news creates. That that's exactly this is exactly the problem because. Because now you have a whole you have a whole new group uh, of of hard right wing alt right 
personalities who go, who do not trust anything but Rush. Yeah. And, you know, Hannity or what, and you know, whatever. They don't, they don't trust Alex any of this. Alex Jones. Other. So when, mm. when they have, yeah, Alex Jones. Yeah. So when they have, you know, when they're getting stuff from CNN and so they're saying, hey, you need to evacuate. Here's the size of the storm, blah, blah, blah. What are they going to do? I mean, Trump has made this whole yeah. thing so that well, you can't trust any of those. So they're going to go right back to Rush to see what he's saying about it. And he's saying, no, it's fine. Stay. Well, and he's he's either so fucking ignorant or short or short sighted or his memory is so short that he doesn't even realize what happened in places like Houston. Because yeah. at one point he actually said these storms, once they actually hit, are never as strong as they're reported. The big fucking problem that they had in Houston was that they didn't order it evacuation yeah. to people and then they got what was it 54 inches of rain in in mm -hmm. in a few days it, and, and they didn't have levees breaking and stuff it was just that just was just rain. the amount of fucking rain. rain yeah and and you talk to officials now and they're like the biggest mistake we made was not telling people to evacuate and rush limbaugh just weeks afterward is now saying that oh these storms are never as bad as they say yeah. it was a it was much much worse than they said it was going to be yeah. they and underestimated the power of it over texas and people died and millions of people are displaced hundreds of thousands of people are homeless now and billions of dollars worth of damage billions and billions of dollars and of damage houston wasn't even in the direct path of mm -hmm. it no. They were on the outskirts of this. They were catching the the rain off the edge of this thing. Oh, and they live in a floodplain. Yeah, so. yeah. But this is highly irresponsible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Limbaugh briefly addressed the issue again on his Wednesday show, apparently upset that Ben Jacobs, a political reporter at the Guardian, tweeted that the radio host was a hurricane denier, <laughs> which I think is oh, kind of funny. But the sad thing about it is it's fucking true. I, I see Alex Jones there, and I was just going to say, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if Alex Jones, at some point, he's got a rant on people saying to stay away from the FEMA concentration camps because the oh, government's going to yeah. imprison you and them, and they're going to drink you the make you drink water that turns the frogs gay and <laughs> turns the, the freaking frogs gay, <laughs> turn the FEMA frogs gay. <sighs> <sighs> well, part of Russia's announcement when he finally decided that he should evacuate uh, on his radio show, he said. May as well go ahead and announce this. I'm not going to go into details because of the security nature of things, but it turns out that we will not be able to do the program from here tomorrow. We'll be on the air next week, folks, from Parks Unknown. So <laughs> we'll be back on Monday. It's just that tomorrow is going to be problematic. Tomorrow it would be, I think, legally impossible for us to originate the program out of here. You fucking liar. L legally impossible. Yeah, yeah. Big fucking lie. And notice he throws an I think in there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, you clearly don't. And no, but I mean, he he's, I think that's his little legal out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Then he, then he continued and said, you know, I had to cancel a bunch of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to, I was going to go to a private movie screening this afternoon and I had a bunch of stuff to do tonight and now that's all blown to smithereens. Oh, fuck you, dude. Well, uh everyone's plans are blown to smithereens. I, I, bet, I bet someone had a vacation plan. Yeah, People probably had birthday parties who, to yeah. go to. Boo fucking who to Rush uh, Limbaugh who was going to a private movie screening and now that's all blown to smithereens. Yeah. Ermac yeah. Gerd, cool down, man. He probably had some cocaine to go snort. Yeah, how many families uh, right. in the in the direct line of this hurricane had plans as simple as making dinner for the well, family? And how many of those people are going to have the proper insurance or funds oh, in their yeah. bank account to be able to even stay somewhere else during this whole situation. And when they get back to be able to rebuild their homes, hardly any. Yeah. Well, and when he was talking about the storms, not being as strong as they reported, yeah. he went on and said, the graphics have been created to make it look like the ocean's having an exorcism. <laughs> Just getting what? rid of the devil here in the form of this hurricane, this bright red stuff. That bright red stuff is the amount of fucking rainfall you yeah. fucking moron. And since since when is red devilly? Well, it I is mean, the only color of the GOP. <laughs> only <laughs> <It's> true. <laughs> Zing. But then again, <laughs> dark, gonna... darker the blue, it's more snow. So that would be the dem the Democrats. Well, if really it's cold, cold, sure. Well, <laughs> it depends on the graph and what they're displaying. But I mean, the, the most of the graphs I've seen, it's either wind speed or amount of rainfall. Yeah. But I mean, what kind of an argument is that for a sixty year old guy to make? Like. Well, you know, it's just, it's devilly. He's well, a how do you petulant know? Because it's little, red. Yeah. Yeah, he's a petulant little turd. But 
Oh, you, you got more on this? Nope. Go ahead. I was going to say, but uh, people are coming out in droves. I mean, not droves. People are trying to pray the storm away. Oh, right. Yeah, I saw this. Uh, yeah, that, that video. Yeah, listener Jesse James Pointer actually posted a thing on my timeline about it earlier today. Day, I want to say my days are starting to blend together because I've been so busy. But I think it was yeah. this morning. Did I, you I saw it? Well, I think it happened today. Yeah. Did you also have breakfast, lunch for dinner? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your days are running together. My <laughs> weeks are running together right now. You, you will feel a lot better if you go take a Duffy. Real quick. I just go- yeah. <laughs> just evacuate. <laughs> oh Jesus! <laughs> Doesn't take long. It's a mandatory. I, I think you're legally supposed to. Yeah, <laughs> but. I, I I found so the the people on the beach praying and stuff they're just delusional. You're not gonna fucking pray the thing away. Well, wait, what's happening here? They I were mean, singing. They're singing. They were singing. They're singing. Set it, it up a little bit, uh, like so. Well, yeah, I didn't see the story. I mean, you showed me a little bit, but well, that was all that was that 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 little short video. Oh, was so all we don't know who organized it. No, or, there no, wasn't any. Do. The, oh, the, do, yeah, it was. Uh, fuck, because the the, the thing I saw just said it had a quick like little two word thing on like look at these people. Hmm. Yeah, I'll have to find the guy's name. It's uh, a pastor. Oh, of course, Florida. But so, so the goal here is to gather on the beach. Yes, where the so, storm is headed. So they could not do this from a, a like a gather in a church somewhere. They had to be f- as close to the storm yeah. as they could get on Maybe. land and facing it. But, but I mean, they're 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 one sect of crazy. Yeah, it's Pastor Philip Ward. Ah, yes. Oh, who is currently feeling blessed or was yeah he, who is ago. in jacksonville florida and had his people in jacksonville which of course isn't at the southern end of no. florida Mm-mm. but he had his people out on the beach singing the hurricane away but and he has complete faith in god that no harm will come to them or their property so if it does so he so he says this was uh 20 what, 22 hours ago. Yeah. Yep. He posted and said, okay, we are moving Sunday morning to Friday night. Because, <laughs> because Sunday morning they're going to be fucked. Because the mayor. There's no way. Yeah. Because, well, because the mayor has ordered evacuations. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, so he says, okay, we're moving Sunday morning to Friday night. The mayor issued mandatory evacuations for zone A and B and for those in low lying areas or mobile homes. Although we are standing in complete faith for no losses or damage from this storm. We know that many have either left the area or are planning to leave the area, so we are going to have a great celebration tonight at 7 p.m. I would love to see you there. And they're going to do some more singing so that they can influence God's decision on what he's going to do with a fucking hurricane. And how how much have they diverted the storm so far? Not much. Well, because they're going about the wrong way. You need to bring up that video I put it in the folder because there is a Gandalf wizard storm jesus freak lady that has that she knows how to get rid of this fucking storm oh Oh, she knows how to do it yeah this lady this lady has it figured out she so there's a four and a half minute video i only watched the first two minutes and that was enough to fucking figure this whole lady out (laughs) okay the whole lady yeah (laughs) well let's see what the pastor's doing wrong then okay can't move more on my you're on yeah yes go ahead hello this is Kat Kerr reporting from Atlantic Beach in Florida. I have just flown in from my meetings in Seattle, Washington. From Seattle. And yet I still have an assignment left to and do. And my broom is still I'm hot. Gonna demonstrate well, it's not a broom. To you what oh. to do when a storm comes, okay? It's forming into a hurricane. I don't even want to give it a name. It doesn't even deserve a name. But I am going to take authority over it so you I can demonstrate. The hurricane doesn't deserve a name. No, it doesn't deserve a name. She's going to take authority over yeah, it. Yeah, because she's God's ordained her with those powers. We're very loud all of a sudden. Yeah. Okay. Straight <laughs> once again, how you deal with this, because we, as believers, are over the weather. We are not under the weather. Christ had no issue stopping storms. That was no little storm that he dealt with. We are joint heirs with him, and you need to be just as bold and passionate in your authority in this earth. So I'm going to demonstrate to you. I'm here in Florida on the coast. The ocean's right there. Our ocean is right there, the Atlantic Ocean, and we are north of this storm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit it off the coast. 
I'm going to command it to go out to sea and dissipate at the same time because it's growing. When it grows in strength, it's feeding from a low pressure system. So what See, she's going to use science right you here. Need high pressure. Motherfucking science. That storm itself has millibars of pressure. The lower millibars. they go, the stronger the storm. So what do you do? You have to command the millibars to rise in the hurricane so it will dissipate and be downgraded. I'm about See, you don't pray command. for it to go away. You command the millibars to do the millibar shit. <laughs> she doesn't even deserve a name. <laughs> oh, and that, that thing she's holding, that's her staff that she's going to use to command the I, ocean. I guess that, yeah. Mm. I wonder if that scarf that's wrapped around it is important. Uh, she probably knitted it with the tears of liberals. <laughs> she seems a little crazy. This lady, I didn't watch any of your other videos, but this lady is I just fucking insane. I just can't with this. That's know. where I stopped right there. Pretty much. I'm like, okay, this lady's fucking nuts. <laughs> I, to I, do I can't, that. I can't so handle it anymore. I'm going to take authority. So father, as your daughter and as a joint heir with Jesus Christ and as a king in the spirit realm, I make a ruling that storm will leave this area, will leave the coast. I will not tolerate its presence anywhere on the coast of Florida. And She's doing all this while speaking into the camera. Like, does she think that God's going to watch this video? Yes. <laughs> well, and, and the other thing is, do you have to be in close geographical proximity to uh, these things? Apparently. Like, like, they, like ja the, the pastor Jacksonville, which is in Florida, yeah. isn't good enough. He had to go to the beach. She was in Seattle, she so she, any flight to anywhere in Florida is going to be good enough for her. So that's fine. So for her, she just has to be in the state. For that guy, for the pastor, he has to be on the beach. Hmm. Like, why, well, why would God just on the street? Why would God put these restraints on on it? Why couldn't she? Couldn't she? If couldn't she, she do it from anywhere? Yeah, in can't the she world? do it from Whoa. Seattle? Yeah, I think this is just another example that Florida really does attract crazy. Yeah. Well, and the other thing is, if she if she really believed she had these powers, why wouldn't she just? Here on the news, oh, there's a possible hurricane or a tropical storm that may develop into a hurricane. Well, that's you know in the Atlantic, and then she could just go millibars be gone from her apartment. <laughs> I think it's and then it never happens. It's just like and real. Knows. It's just like real life. Well, Gandalf. because nobody would know, she wouldn't get any credit, Matt. She's 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 an attention seeker. See, Gandalf would have to stand in front of the storm, put down his staff, and say, "You shall not pass." And that's you what she's going to do. You shall not pass. And that's what she's got to do. She can't go, you shall not pass from fucking Seattle, because then it's just can't pass Seattle. And I could, I, and I, I accept your argument, and I think that would work perfectly well for Hurricane, uh, what the fuck was it? The Balrog or whatever it was? No, that's the Street Fighter guy. No, but, it was a Balrog. Was it? Yeah. I think so. I yeah. The big, yeah. the big demon thing that, yeah, the yeah, Gandalf, oh, yeah, yeah. The big fire breathing. Yeah, it was a Balrog, yeah. Like, yeah. Pretty sure that's right. Okay. <laughs> Yay, I nerded. All right. <laughs> I'm commanding it to leave and get back out in the ocean. At the same time, it will dissipate. Yeah, go so home. I command the millibars in that <laughs> hurricane. You rise right now. You keep rising and rising and rising so the storm will be downgraded, downgraded, downgraded. <laughs> and then I'm commanding a high to come and sit on the storm so it can be crushed. So here I go. I'm going to command that storm, and I'm going to hit it <laughs> off of our coast. I'm going to hit it oh. out to sea, and we're going to uh. crush it with our authority. And that's how passionate you need to be. You watch and see that storm will dissipate. It will come to nothing. I will not tolerate you, devil, taking authority in our weather and messing with our weather system. So I take power over all the power of the enemy, driving that storm and using that storm as a weapon. Like they Wait, she's insane. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She's she's certifiable. But uh, so this was obviously recorded like maybe yesterday or the day before. Uh -huh. Um, And the storms increased. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that whole time when she was saying Millibars increase. Yeah. All I could all I could think about was somewhere in England, Ed Miliband getting an inexplicable erection. <laughs> it just was too close. <laughs> Yeah, this, uh, this, you know, people say, what's the harm in magical thinking and religion and whatever? This, this, this right yeah, here, yeah, well, this kind of shit. This is one, one thing. I, to be honest, this is slightly less harmful than the Mike Pence's. Oh, sure. I mean, she's really not harming many other people. No. Besides herself and anybody who listens to her and 
would decide to go out on the or, beach right. and wave around their fucking magic staff with a scarf tied around it and their name in bejeweled down the side. But I mean, it, imagine- it's still it's still a problem of influence that that this woman could have over other stupid people right right it's someone it's, who would go confront a tornado with their fucking wooey staff and try to get it to go away and then get sucked <laughs> into the fucker well, yeah. it's, it's it's the idea that society allows these borderline schizophrenic delusions to exist right that's the danger and that they're oh. okay and not only that they're okay but they're acceptable and part of mainstream line of thought for people who yep. believe in supernatural bullshit like God and Jesus and right. all of that other stuff. Yeah, spirits and all that. And power yeah. over nature. What this? Yeah. You are not doing that this time. I will not allow it. And I command the host of heaven, you go right now, you get in that storm along with me, come in in the middle of our surprise and cause it to dissipate. I want you to shred that storm. You shred it. You shred it. So there'll be nothing left to it. And I take authority gladly and rule gladly with Jesus Christ. So yeah. when, uh, when do they accept that maybe the shit they're doing is completely ineffective? I don't think they do. I mean, no, they can't, they can't. I they, mean, I, th- I think they, they just, they justify why it didn't work to themselves. They're like, oh, I didn't, I didn't try hard enough. Or it's God's will. Well, and, and you'll notice that they never give themselves a timeline for any of this shit, right? Like, I'm doing this now and within 30 minutes, this storm yeah. will be fucking gone. No, but she's at, saying at, at it, least, will, it will dissipate. Well, fuck, well, of but course, it, a week from now, it's but, not going to be around but anymore. But she's not only saying it'll dissipate, that it will turn around and not hit Florida and dissipate in the, o- back mm. in the ocean. So if it goes over land and dissipates, she's fucking completely wrong. Or if it hits Florida, period, she's completely wrong. Frankly, Dan, I can't believe that you would sit here and accuse her of being unscientific. (laughs) (laughs) Slanderous, sir. But, I I mean, it's it's something that I'm sure other people have noticed, but it's something that I always question whenever I hear claims like this, like, okay, give me a fucking timeline. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, when? You know, I run several different groups and pages on facebook not as many as i used to because i'm busy with us with with a bunch of other shit but you know there are a few that i still have that i don't really do anything with but every now and then i'll get some credulous dipshit who will go out and make a post on an atheist page that i run and they'll say something like well i'm praying for you and you know if if you pray too and and we can get enough people doing it then your soul will change and you'll turn to god and blah blah, blah. and it's like okay great give me a fucking timeline Tell me how long it's going to take. Tell me how many people have to be involved. Let's put this down. And then when it doesn't happen, how will you explain yeah. it away? Tell me your, tell me, I want to get all the fucking details down now. And then you tell me if it doesn't happen, what your excuse will be. Yeah. And they never do. Well, you, oh, you're just, your heart is heartened and you're never, well, Satan is controlling you now. You're changing the fucking subject, man. Give me some fucking specifics here. I'm tired of dealing with your bullshit. Tell me what the fuck needs to happen yeah. for my mind and my heart to change to accept Jesus Christ. Because as far as I know, it's not going to fucking happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the last missionaries that had come by my house told me if I, I had to read, pray, and fast often, and eventually God will speak to me. They're like, well, it happened to me, so it can happen to you too. Yeah, if you if you stop eating for four or five days, <laughs> God will speak to you. Yeah, that's not God. <laughs> that's my guts. Yeah, and then you're gonna have breakfast, lunch for dinner, and have to duffy. Yeah. Do we want to watch? Your, there's no, only about a minute left. Yeah, you know, you know, know, we want I, to. I don't. No, she's uh, gonna keep commanding things to happen, probably. And it's. I think we had the gist of what yeah, she was saying within I, the third, yeah. first thirty seconds. Or I so. just thought she was crazy. And kind of funny a little bit, and Sad. something we well, yeah, but nothing we have to take too serious. You know, oh, like <laughs> okay, like there's a bunch of other people who say stuff like that that we might take a little bit. Serious. Well, not taking serious, but she's not she's not harming anybody. Uh, I would argue that she poss- that she certainly could be. I mean, her all the views that probably came on that video were just from people mocking it that saw it and got posted on Facebook. <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, but you don't know. I mean, how many yeah, people saw yeah. it and they're like. I'm going to go get me a staff with a scarf right now and walk out to the beach and tell that storm to decrease its millibars. Maybe just the people who like to LARP. <laughs> I, th- I think the, I think the larger, the more, probably the more realistic danger is people watching that and not necessarily taking up her persona, but going, 
Yeah, I mean, she's obviously a little bit kind of eccentric, but she has the basic idea. You know, yes, God has power over nature, and we te- we we should be able to, you know, to appeal to, to him to, to use faith to you know move mountains. It says in the Bible, right? Mm, yeah. Or wherever two or more are gathered in my name, right? Yeah. All this stuff is possible. So, how many dozens are on the beach singing, not fucking moving mountains? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mountains are harder to move than hurricanes, aren't mm, they? I would guess so. They're a lot heavier, sure, yeah. and denser. And yeah. Anyway, it's just Miss Non. <laughs> Nonsense. But speaking of Ermageddon, uh, I <laughs> Ermagerd, <laughs> Ermagerd, Ermagerd. <laughs> I saw a friend of mine on Facebook yeah. posted that. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was kind of funny. funny. It was yeah. kind of funny. Beneath a graying sky that foreshadowed the hurricane to come, Pope County, Florida Sheriff Grady Judd shrugged. Mm. Quote: Never before did I think. Is he like Atlas? He shrugged. He, yeah, he's yeah. It's, he's. Like asshole. We'll find out in a minute. <laughs> Quote, never before did I think we'd get beat up for giving people a warning and keeping people safe, he told local television crews. But hey, that's okay. All right. Sounds innocuous. Yeah. Why would you get beat up for that? Sure. Right. No straw man. Not possibly. Right. Okay. Uh, Sheriff Judd was referring to criticism that followed a string of tweets from his office Wednesday morning saying that anyone with an outstanding warrant would not be admitted to shelters during Hurricane oh, yeah. Irma. Are you fucking kidding me? I remember reading this as fucking complete fucking Jesus Christ. Though asshole. some of the though some of the tweets singled out sexual offenders and predators, others said all people with warrants would be better off turning themselves into a secure space of a different kind. Yeah. Jail. <laughs> Quote If you go to a shelter for Irma, be advised, sworn law enforcement officers will be at every shelter checking IDs. Sex sex offenders and predators will not be allowed. What a fucking asshole. So now he's going to he's going to terrify people who may have a warrant out for their arrest for a minor traffic offense. I've had a warrant out for my arrest for for speeding and a ticket that I let that I let go and I didn't pay when I was young and fucking stupid. I had a warrant out for my mm-hmm. arrest. So I could have been one of these people who's yeah. now fucking terrified that if a storm hits and I go to seek shelter, that I'm going to be thrown in jail because of this fucking asshole. Yeah, so you're going to be in danger yeah. and, and left out. Fuck the, him. All because he couldn't do his job before the hurricane. What are you doing letting all these warrants go then, yeah. dude? That's the only job you have. See, and that's where the mayor of Houston was the exact opposite, saying, hey, I, we don't care if you're illegal. Come here, seek shelter. We're not going to fucking yeah. deport your ass if we find out you're not a, a citizen. Yeah. yeah, what is he going to be? Is he going to be checking people's fucking ID at the door? That's what he said. Yeah. yeah. Jesus Christ. Law, having law enforcement yeah. check their... So instead of having law enfortment out on the streets helping people evacuate and I go to their homes... I would punch this motherfucker. He's having law enforcement sit at the fucking doors of, of shelters checking fucking IDs. Right, rather than doing any relief efforts. Yeah. yeah. And I think adding sex offenders... Uh, as part of the tweets is, is, is sort of setting up a dichotomy, right? Like either you're, qua- either you're for our quasi legal ID checks or you're for the pedos. Yeah. That's right? exactly what a, he's doing. A tactic to yeah. ease concerns about questionable ethics yeah. here. Yeah. He's, and, a, he's appealing to people's emotion because nobody yeah. likes a fucking predator, right? No. Right. And I don't like pedophiles at all, but if they've served their time, doesn't mean they have to go back and sit in a jail cell while the fucking hurricane's going on. Yeah. Uh, another tweet read, if you go to a shelter for Irma and you have a warrant, we'll gladly escort you to a safe and secure shelter called the Polk County Jail, uh, which received more than 7,800 likes and also garnered more than 7,800 replies by early Tuesday morning, largely from users chastising Judd for potentially endangering people with warrants uh, as a Category 5 hurricane ripped through the Caribbean and beamed toward Florida. Good. Now, this tweet. That tweet was slightly different because he does say all warrants there. Yeah. So does that mean non-moving traffic violations yeah. or fishing without a license or whatever? Yeah. yeah. Bullshit. Like, um, so video footage from television channel Fox 13 showed judge surprised that the policy had drawn national criticism. Uh, he said his office had given offenders four or five days warning to make other arrangements <laughs> if they didn't want to turn themselves in. Uh, do you think he's being disingenuous about this here like like maybe like a touch feigning yeah. surprise because yeah. or or is he that out of touch i mean do you think he really thinks this is an acceptable alternative probably mm, I, I don't know i mean it's it's hard to judge somebody's motivation but either way he's still putting people in danger yeah. which is fucking sick and wrong well, not to mention uh against his uh yeah duty. to protect and serve mm-hmm 
Well, I mean, I guess you could argue that he thinks he is protecting the people who don't have warrants from the being people around who people who do shelter. Yeah. yeah, because that guy that has unpaid parking tickets is so violent. Yeah. Hmm. And then the very next one, he goes right back to the extreme, possibly sensing pressure. But he says, uh, if you're a sexual predator or sexual offender, you're, we're not going to let you sleep next to any five or six year old babies, period. Fuck this guy. Oh, my God. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so setting up a checkpoint and, and exploiting a natural disaster, uh, well, and, that, and that's talking about checkpoints. They kept the checkpoints open in Florida. I mean, not Florida, I mean, uh, Texas while people were evacuating. Mm. And what the fuck does he, does he think that it's only people with a current record who could ever possibly right. break the law or, right. or well, you that's, know, commit acts of atrocity against a child that there couldn't be somebody who's just never been caught that could go and seek shelter somewhere and perhaps molest a child. Well, this is clearly not about being rational. It's about chest thumping. Yeah. Right. I mean, I'm a, I'm a big tough guy. I'm gonna keep well, everybody safe and tell all mm-hmm. these other people they're going to be locked up. Fuckers. Well, just a few hours after judge Judd's thread, uh, the ACLU of Florida posted a response on Twitter. Quote, most people with outstanding warrants are dealing with low-level and nonviolent offenses, mm-hmm. posing no risk to people seeking refuge in emergency, uh, emergency shelters. The statement said Judge was exploiting a natural disaster and exploiting lives, and that he should not burnish his Joe Arpaio-style yeah. cuff, tough cop credentials with a series of irresponsible tweets. Mm-hmm. That's what I was thinking. He's trying to be more like Judge and Joe they, Arpaio to to get sure, Trump's Joe liking. Yeah. yeah, and then and then for they sure, noted yeah. that many warrants involved, uh, many 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 of the warrants involved, uh, only unpaid parking tickets. So yeah, it was yeah. it was largely parking ticket stuff. Um, Sheriff Judd's threatening tweets send the message that these individuals must choose between facing a natural disaster without aid and shelter. Or going to jail over things like unpaid traffic tickets, said the ACLU. Mm-hmm. Uh, according to Fox 13 footage, Judge said that no, uh, with, Judge said those with minor outstanding warrants had the choice to go book in, take care of it, get out, and then you could come to the shelter, or they could choose not to turn themselves in and avoid the shelters altogether. Yeah, because if you have very little funds available to you, the the, ber- the very best thing that you could spend those on during a fucking disaster is paying for your warrant. Yeah, right. Not for food, shelter, water, any shit like that. You need to pay for your fucking warrant and, right. and bailing fees. They want their tax dollars. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see if there's any more. It's just a complete lack of humanity and compassion. Yeah, he's a fucking asshole. Oh, yeah, this is interesting on his history. He was elected sheriff of Polk County in 2004, having started in the office in 1972 as a dispatcher. Wow. The headline of 2011 Tampa Bay Times article... Uh, claimed judge made his name on moral outrage, having devoted much of his career to ridding the county of what he called smut and dirt, uh. be it strip clubs, adult video stores, or escort services. Oh, he's the Christian police. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. He's a crusader. Yep. Fan fucking tastic. Yep. Um, they said that undocumented immigrants would not be affected by the policy according to the Orlando Sentinel. Obviously a concern. What if oh, they yeah. have a warrant out? Yeah, then, or, then they are, of course. Or they don't have a valid ID to be checked at the door. Yeah, no shit, right? Uh, but she added that the rule will also help the county keep a log of who visits the shelters during the hurricane. And that sounds ominous coming after yeah. all of this other uh-huh. stuff. Yeah. Like, I mean, if if they were just keeping <laughs> records for, you know, the sake of, you know, the future or keeping track of people like, okay, someone's missing. Let's see. Well, they were here yesterday at this time, whatever. But after this entire article, now it's like, uh, I don't know, dude. I don't think I trust you. I mm-hmm. go camping instead. Um, oh, and here's, here's another problem, uh, with all of this is that, uh, the Sentinel quoted state representative Carlos Smith saying checking IDs in of storm evacuees unfairly impacts un- undocumented immigrants. The message has already been received by the 18,000 undocumented persons in Polk County. Smith, a Democrat told the Sentinel, this is not the message we need to be sending out with a disaster upon us. Or yeah. it, it also impacts. Or ever, but, it also impacts the elderly. It impacts the yeah. poor. People who either can't get somewhere to get an ID or can't afford to get an ID. Right. Oh, apparently, fuck you. You can either go to jail or get no shelter or come to the shelter and be turned away because you don't have an ID. Or if you're already homeless, 
You probably got warrants if you're fuck everything a lot about of this guy, yeah. man. And you you know what else is interesting too? The, this guy, you know this this guy's a hard right, right? Yeah. Kind of guy, right? Yeah. Aren't they for smaller government? When are you gonna be for <laughs> smaller government? You talk about it. <laughs> Too true. Too true. Well, I have uh what, I don't know, three, four Twitter responses that were at Polk County Sheriff. Okay. Uh first one, thank God you are watching for predators taking advantage of our children in times of disasters. Thank you. So clearly somebody who has no fucking idea what they're looking at. Uh, Polk County Sheriff Grady Judd is a fine law enforcement officer. Both of my parents grew up in Polk County, and I have other relatives there. Okay. <laughs> Good for you. Uh, at Distracted Dad tweeted, Joe Arpaio, I'm the most hated, I'm the most heartless sheriff in America. Sheriff Judd, hold my beer. Hold beer. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Uh, this is code for discrimination in time of need. Not providing public service, Sheriff Grady Judd should be fired immediately. Of course, he can't be. Mm -hmm. he's, that's an elected yeah. position. Um, and, of course, Alex Jones chimed in. No refuge for criminals except for the county jail. Yep. Fuck them both. Rat in a cornhole. Yep. Mm -hmm. Hi, this is Megan Kennedy. I'm a speaker with the Satanic Temple. You can find me on Twitter at Six Moments, and you're listening to The Godless Revolution. Next up, Gorilla Enclosure. Gorilla Enclosure. Tragedy always brings the internet together, and nothing was more tragic online than the Harambe incident. Rest in peace, Harambe. Tear off God's dick and arms. <laughs> Thank you to everybody who has rated the show on iTunes and Stitcher and are following us on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. And to all our Patreon patrons, you make the show possible. You had more stuff, Matt. Yeah, so uh, Trump has been in North Dakota recently. Mm. Um, What's it doing in North Dakota? Uh, what is there to do in North Dakota? It's a little bit cringy. What happened? Have you guys seen does, this? Is, do, is there something that he does that isn't a little bit cringy? Well, okay, at that, least a little bit cringy. That's true. Yeah. Was this was this the uh, thing with his more with his wife? Nope. This is with with his other wife, Ivanka. No. Oh. So uh, Trump said that Ivanka pleaded to come along to the tax reform event. Oh, please, Daddy, can I go to the tax <laughs> event? Was it on her knees with her head thrust against his crotch? <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh, uh, no, but, but, I really want. <laughs> Go to the tax event. That was disgusting. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Con continue. Her, her whole breath just smells like two page. Oh. <laughs> She's got Cheeto face now. <laughs> Bronzer. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, you know, Trump goes on this whole thing. He has, obviously has nothing prepared to talk about. Uh, you know, can't this guy has no ability to this is kind of an aside this isn't the actual thing but i'm just i'm just saying he has absolutely no ability to to make a impactful or passionate statement about anything that has any depth whatsoever well i mean whenever he talks it's just this bumbling sort of half words and and kind of finishing sentences and then throwing a few brags in there and maybe kind of touches on the actual topic but not really and then he's done and, and he you're also, kinda like what the fuck were, what are you talking about yeah. he also doesn't understand the difference between tax reform and tax cuts yeah well well he just he can't string together more than one or two thoughts for yeah. any coherent anything right, like right. it's it's all just a jumble of it's like somebody just cut out sentences from a book and tossed them in a hat and he's just pulling them out at random and reading yeah. them it's Ooh. a presidency of mad get mad Thro libs yeah, or throw, whatever, yeah. And, and with the occasional brag thrown in there that right. sounds like a yeah. fun game <laughs> <laughs> so right, how to, for how to write a trump uh speech yeah yeah so while he was doing that uh, part of what he was saying when he wanted to, I guess, get himself off out of the spotlight and have get Ivanka off or out of the spotlight. What did I say? Get himself off or out of the spotlight. Which, which was it? Is he going to get himself that, off? Or that, that was a full sentence. Oh, I don't know okay, what you're okay, confused okay. by. <laughs> He's get himself step into off, the spotlight or, and get off or out of the spotlight. Oh, okay. So, okay. Okay. 
<laughs> um, so he brings Ivanka up to say something, and he tells the story about why she's there, which is already uh, weird enough, okay. right? That's kind of awkward. So he goes, she said, Dad, can I come with you? Actually, she said, Daddy. Gross. Actually, she said, Daddy, can I go with you? I like that. Uh, I said, yes, you can. Look, look at Ivanka. Come up, honey. She's so good. She wanted to make the trip. <laughs> the, like the, it's it, a hard thing? Uh, now, it, this would already be cringy, but given what we know about the way he thinks about Ivanka from what he said earlier, it makes yeah. it a real clear your browser history moment. It's not just cringy. It's fucking creepy. Yeah, he thinks about fucking her if he hasn't already. Yeah. Um, Ivanka addressed the crowd as well on Wednesday. Uh, she said a couple of things that actually were semi-coherent. Um, the reason he was there to, yeah, as you said, to push tax reform through Congress. Trump spent several minutes at the top of his speech discussing other topics, right? Including, uh, the attendance of Heidi Heitkamp. Yeah. Um, and so my concern is like, you know, the, the concern is about whether this is appropriate. Uh, not only just having her there and not being uh, an official member of the cabinet, but also this weird relationship they have. Um, yeah, she, he likes it when she calls him daddy, I guess. So fucking yuck. <laughs> yeah. That's, <laughs> I, I, and I, I wish I had more of the story. I don't, I didn't hear anymore because I had to immediately go shower, but <laughs> <laughs> with, with that, like that lava bar soap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A and, pumice stone. And two grit sandpaper. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Extra gritty. <laughs> no, what, what else we got? I, th I think that's all. Have you it exhausted your I resources? I spent most of the week on my piece, my What Matters piece. <laughs> I spent most of the <laughs> week on my, on my piece. My piece. <laughs> <laughs> Pol grit. Polishing that piece. <laughs> but no, because like, a lot of the stuff I heard him talk about at that thing, uh, as far as the tax stuff went, I'm like, he kept saying tax reform. And then talking about how he's going to cut taxes for businesses. I'm like, that's not tax reform. Cutting business taxes is well, cutting business taxes. I mean, you could make the argument that it is a yeah that it is a type of reform. Sure. It's just not. It's a change. Going, yeah, it's a change. You're not going to get any more tax revenue. Of course, you're not going to fix the tax system by but it's only reducing it's, corporate tax. It only it only affects one subset of the population people who own businesses if it was true tax reform it would be reform across the board as far as how taxes are done and collected and who has to pay what amount instead it's just no we're gonna say hey businesses guess what you don't have to pay any more taxes hmm i got you that's where i'm like it's not really a reform it's just reducing taxes for business mm. which he once i in the part i saw he Use the top-down economic bullshit in it, saying, "Well, if we if we cut the taxes to our to our job creators, they're going to be able to pay their employees more." I'm like, we all know it's fucking bullshit. Yeah, hmm. that when when has that happened? Speaking yeah, of yeah, yeah. speaking no. of Donald Trump, there was more news about Donald Trump Jr. Oh, yeah. this week, offering the fourth different explanation as to why he met with. People with close ties to the Kremlin, I mean, Russian officials. What was so the first? The first thing he said was that there was he he had no meeting. Yeah, there was no, yeah, nothing happened. We 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 never met with Russians. Yeah. Never happened. Never ever 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 ever. And then the second one was we met with them to talk about a uh, not abortion adoption. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yep. Yeah, same thing. We met with them to talk about the Russian adoption program. Yep. <laughs> the the. That bad President Obama canceled. Of course, it it's not a program that ever fucking existed anyway. And so we, that was that was a second one. The third one was to say, well, yeah, they sent us an email saying that they have information. That they have some stuff about Hillary Clinton, and, and so and we didn't know they were Russian. So yeah, we went, but you know, we didn't really talk about it, and, yeah. and it didn't pan out, and there was no big deal. And then this week he said, oh, no, we went because I wanted to get dirt on Hillary Clinton to see if she was fit to be president, which is complete. I mean, bullshit. the irony seems to be completely lost on him about fitness to be president. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. like, where's your daddy's credentials? Yeah. Yeah. What does your dad have as far as fitness to be president? 
sure, he's run companies into the ground, mm-hmm. but we don't really want that to happen to the <laughs> country. So you remember when uh, Trump was going to miss the Paris Agreement thing or whatever, and he's like, "I was elected to." run pittsburgh not paris or whatever yeah <laughs> and then i just saw that clip again on seth myers and he's like pittsburgh you're not qualified to be mayor of pittsburgh <laughs> 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 just reminded me of that <laughs> we also have some other news that comes to us from fan of the show and listener and friend mr taylor grin who has started his new project called grin and barrent Ooh. Because it's him and Joe his Grant. friend yeah. Bear who are doing this. But it just works so well to play on words. Yeah, it, it's very nice. And he, they, like I said, they both write really well, mm-hmm. provide a lot of great information. Uh, he sent me a link before we started recording. He's like, hey, man, hopefully this can help. And I'm like, awesome. Yes, absolutely. But apparently the Washington Post has a good wrap up of the Trump-Russia situation, stringing together the major threads of the story thus far. The great thing about this piece is that it presents the information as though you know nothing about it, So if you haven't been following along yet, (coughs) Republicans, this would be a good starting point. I'm also not going to waste your time summarizing it. It's a good read, and today is International Literacy Day, so give it a try. So everyone go out and litter all day long. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You can find this on grinandbearint.com. Special Counsel Robert Mueller is now looking into the statement that was crafted aboard an Air Force One flight in July regarding a meeting Donald Trump Jr. took with a Russian lawyer during the campaign, we read in Vice News. This is especially important considering that Trump Jr. said he didn't recall White House involvement. How can he say that he didn't recall it? When he was directly involved. When it was just announced, you know, like a month and a half ago or whatever, that, yeah, Donald Trump is the one who went through and said, no, this is what we're going to say. Tell him this is why you did the meeting. That's just, it's a bunch of fucking nonsense. And he's given four different excuses now. Yep. He, I mean, just, just looking at the fact alone that he's provided four different excuses as to why they held this meeting. He has lied at least once, right? You give four different stories. At least one of those is untrue. Well, I mean, as soon as he changes the story once, it proves he's trying to lie about something. Right. So he has, he has lied to Congress about this. Yeah. As far as I'm aware, I could be wrong, and, oh, actually, we should probably talk about what I said during the episode a couple weeks ago. I can't remember if it was during the Patreon portion or during the regular portion Uh, of the show, but you, Mr. Duffy, said something about the vice president not being able to be fired by the president, and I was like, oh, fuck yeah, no, yeah, the president (laughs) can absolutely fire him, fucking, yeah, that's silly that you would even say that, and I was completely wrong, totally wrong. Absolutely 100% wrong. The president cannot fire the vice president. It's not something that can be done. I was absolutely wrong. And as I was editing the show, I was like, uh, maybe I should double check that. <laughs> so I went out and checked and found out I was totally wrong. And then I thought, uh, maybe I should take that out of the episode. And then I thought, no, I'm fucking, we, we admit our flaws. Yeah. I, yeah, we, we fuck up sometimes and. I'm not above admitting when I was absolutely wrong, in which I absolutely was. <laughs> Republicans. <laughs> uh, after denying for months, Facebook has finally admitted that Russians bought ads during the 2016 election targeted at American voters. Uh-oh. Senator Mark Warner, however, says that this admission is only, quote, the tip of the iceberg. The crazy hmm. thing about that is, I, I know... uh uh, I, I want to say the guy's name, but the only name that comes up to my mind is Mark Wahlberg. Uh, <laughs> the guy, how's your mother doing? <laughs> I don't, the Facebook guy, Mark Zuckerberg. Mark Zuckerberg. Oh, there okay. we go. Like, I don't know where you're going. Uh, which after after the whole Russian thing and in the whole election, when he came on, said that they're going to try to do better in keeping fake news off of Facebook. When how are they going to do that? I don't know how they're going to do it. If they're going to try to but obviously, they helped put a lot of the fake news on fucking Facebook to begin with. Mm, right. Now with that coming out. And they profited off of it. Right. So I don't have much trust in him. If the company's like, hey, we're going to give you $100,000 to put these ads up. Okay. Ah. Yeah. Uh, there's another little link in here that says Paul Manafort is probably in deep trouble. And we talked about that during last week's episode. 
Yeah. Uh, where I said, you know, Paul Manafort's woes are just piling up. I, I'm curious to get Taylor's take on this. Maybe he can send us a message if he hears this. I should have asked him pre-show. But we we talked two episodes ago about, you know, if, if Manafort doesn't flip on Donald Trump and doesn't say anything against him, figuring that Donald Trump will just pardon him anyway, right? Like, how much pressure can the state bring to bear against Paul Manafort himself if Donald Trump would just pardon him anyway. But now Miller has partnered with, was it New York State Attorney? The one that, the, what, the that was uh, let General, go by Trump. Or, or somebody, oh, somebody yes. working in the, uh, it, it is the New York State Attorney General. Um, and so they could bring state charges against Paul Manafort, of which Donald Trump has no power yep. of the pardon. You can only pardon federal offenses. So, so I thought, oh, this Mueller guy is pretty smart cookie. He's going to put the screws to, to Manafort however he can. Congress. Astoundingly, Trump snubbed Ryan and McConnell instead opting to forge a debt ceiling increase in Harvey relief bill with Pelosi and Schumer. Which I was surprised about. I, well. Well, I was surprised it was a closed door thing with just the Democrats in there. And excluding the Republicans from it. Well, I think, I mean, what other options did Trump have, really? He he painted himself into a corner, he, right, he, where he's saying that you, I'm not going to, I'm not going to authorize a debt ceiling increase unless you pay for the wall. Yeah. And everybody says, well, we're not going to fucking pay for the wall. So what, are you going to shut the fucking government down? And well, okay, well, maybe I'll work out a debt increase limit with, with the Democrats so that the Republicans will get on my side and they'll finally start doing things that I want them to do. I mean, he's he. It was it was kind of a savvy political play on Trump's part, which took me su by surprise. It, it took me by its surprise as well. But I think he could have done the same exact thing without having his wall funded with the Republicans if he wanted to. I love that. I love that Paul Ryan was out there like. Of course, we're not going to accept this deal. This this deal from the Democrats is it's ridiculous. Bullshit. It's terrible. It's what? What's that? Oh, Trump. What? Oh, he oh. made the deal. Oh, the he made the right deal here. This was the smart move. Oh, what the? <laughs> He's such a spineless asshole. But so this postpones the government shutdown because of the budget until December. So it looks like in December, I, as a government employee, will be taking a vacation of indeterminate length for no pay. I mean, that's what it looks like to me yeah. because, because either Trump is going to have to swallow his pride again in December. Or, or he's going to hope you forget about the whole wall thing. Yeah. In, in the but, budget. but he's not. I mean, he keeps no. hammering yeah. on that. That's the one thing that he wants to get done. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it's his goal, right? It's the thing he fucking chanted since he entered the race for president of the United States that he was going to build that wall. It's going to be brilliant. It's going to be amazing. We're going to put solar panels on it. We're, it's going to yeah. be, Mexico's going to pay for it. Uh, Mexico said that they didn't want it, and, and the ex-president said that he's not going to pay for it. Well, now the wall just got 10 feet higher. Like, fuck yeah. you, you moron. You want to know the funny thing about that? Mm. So uh, one of my chiefs went on a road trip to South uh, Southern California, and he's showing me these photos. He goes, check this out. What do you think that is? I'm like, it looks like an old broken down baseball field. He goes, nope. That's the American side of the border wall. Now look at this wall. I'm like, what's that? He goes, that's the Mexican side, and that's no man's land in between. And I'm like, I'm like that jinky old rusting fence that's falling into the water is the American side, and the giant wall that looked brand spanking new is the Mexican side. He's like, yep. Trying to keep those fucking Americans out. He said he, <laughs> exactly. He said if I went near that wall, I would have got my ass fucking kicked. Well, he's like, but look on the other side of the wall. Here's a whole these fucking families on the other side of the fucking wall having a big old beach party. No Americans are allowed anywhere near the fucking wall on the American side. <laughs> Congress passed a bill for self-driving cars unanimously. The language allows the autonomous vehicles to be deployed without meeting safety standards, though rather than deregulation, the intent is to allow for vehicles without a steering wheel or other elements that are required for human-driven cars. Now, that's crazy. Under the bill, manufacturers seeking exemptions must demonstrate self-driving cars are at least as safe as existing vehicles. Hmm. It will now go to the Senate. In the tinfoil hat section of this post, it says that Kenya's Supreme Court has nullified their presidential election. It can be done, people. 
<laughs> After signs of irregularities in the vote, interestingly, Cambridge Analytica, the company run by the Mercer family, which supported Brexit and Trump, was involved in Kenya's election. We oh, talked quite a bit about yeah. that in our two episodes on Bannon. Yeah. From all of the information that we received from from our friend who who gave us all of that information yeah. for that. Alexander Scholl. <laughs> Alexander Scholl, that's right. But uh yeah, whole bunch See, of interesting stuff. I would love a self driving car. Well, yeah, who wouldn't, man? I'd I know. Why well, and if you had self driving cars everywhere, you wouldn't even need your own vehicle, right? Uber is working on self driving cars yep. where you just Ring it up on your app. The the car shows up. You get in. You go. It drops you off. It goes on to pick somebody else. I would just oh, like to be able to nap on my two hour drive to work. Oh, that would be nice, wouldn't that it? That would be awesome. I would love to be able to get in a vehicle for the one day a week that I travel to the office, and it's an hour on the way there yeah. and an hour plus on the way back because of traffic. To just be able to get into something and sit down and start working, that I wouldn't have to worry about. Driving and traffic and everything, I could just sit down and start my work day right there in the thing that's taking me to the yeah. office. I mean, that would, that would cut two hours or add two hours to my day that I could be that much more productive. So my only worry about self-driving cars, especially in a state that gets snow, you've got this, you've got sensors on your car. Was that the, a, was, I was waiting for the end of the sentence. I was no, too. it was continuing on. <laughs> Wait, so, hold on. Before you get my, into, before we get into the self-driving cars madness, I just want to say that for Madness, for all technology <laughs> and fuck. stuff, for all of your fact-checked congregated intel needs, go to grinandbarrent.com. That's grinandbarrent.com. Yes. <laughs> that sounds like a professional commercial. <laughs> <laughs> no, but really, he does. They, they, they do, do a lot of fucking research. Yes, they do an astounding job of, of putting all this stuff together so it's easy, it's accessible. And, and they provide links to all the sources. And they provide and links yeah. to sources and additional reading, yeah. if you are so inclined. If you're the kind of person who likes to be informed and spend time reading stuff. <laughs> we should put a link in the show notes. Yes, absolutely. We okay. will. Yeah. That's grin and barren that cat. <laughs> so anyway, I think I, the, 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 the downfall for the self-driving car is the sensors, I think. Cause you, you have the, uh, so the avoidance sensors on your vehicle. I have lots of sensors on my vehicle. So <laughs> the avoidance sensors on my vehicle, if when it's snowing out and mm -hmm. snow collects on the bumper mm -hmm. or anything like that, mm -hmm. my car will give me a warning saying, Hey, your avoidance system is being blocked. Yeah. Well, self driving cars, GPS. Okay. Yeah. GPS doesn't get blocked by snow covering a sensor in your car. It but, could. Well, but it will block the v vision of your car from seeing other cars. What will snow? Yeah. If, if, if the sensors sure. are blocked, because that's how they, they see judging, Hey, there's a car come on my left, car come on my right, how far yeah. one is in front or behind them. What it, well, yeah, there was a day when I couldn't use the side mirrors in my vehicle, but now my side mirrors are heated and it just melts the snow away and it's totally fine. Well, I guess if they heated them, <laughs> but I was that, literally going to go there very now. It's going to be like, if only we had a thing <laughs> that could, could melt increase the, the temperature slightly. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> By the way, Ryan is not looking at anyone. He's he's staring up at the ceiling and thinking. I'm trying to think of how real hard. I mean, because I, I know for the sensors on the like the front of my vehicle, it doesn't uh -huh. take a whole lot, especially in the winter time, for them to say, "Hey, I I can't ses sense anything in front of the vehicle. Yeah, I won't brake automatically for you anymore. Yeah. So I that's just you know. Could you put a feature in the car that? Maybe when you get in and try to be a dumb fuck that goes somewhere and the car goes, <laughs> hey, uh, I'm not going to turn on until you clear the sensors because I can't fucking see out here. Well, I'm it's not usually when blind. I'm driving. Yeah. It, 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 like oh, when I'm parked, it builds up, it while, builds up driving, while driving right? from the, the stuff kicking up off the road from other cars. Well, in then front just of me. shut off and until you clean it up. You know, like <laughs> they just stop the stop vehicle right in the middle of the, the well, freeway. <laughs> well, and, and a lot of those vehicles have multi types, multiple types of sensors for that kind of stuff. Yeah. They'll have radar. They've got GPS. They've got cameras with yeah, software even that can the, identify the, things. The, so the Tesla. So if one system fails, or even if one type of sensor on an, or if one system fails on an array of sensors, you have backups and failovers. Yeah, because I know the Tesla has like fifteen sensors around that fucking car, watching everything while it's self driving. Oh, yeah. My brother-in-law just got a job with Tesla. He starts nice. on Monday. Yeah, at the local place here in uh -huh. Utah. Yeah. 
Hmm. Yeah, he's going to be That's a service tech badass. there. He's pretty stoked about it. But I, cause I know the, the current laws when they're doing it in California for the self-driving cars, cause they're yeah. doing the, was it the, was it Google that had the Google self-driving car they wanted to put on the roads? Well, Google has self-driving stuff. Uber is investing in self-driving stuff. Of course, Tesla is yeah. developing all of because their software for self-driving cars. I know they wanted to put a car on the road with nobody in it, mm -hmm. but then they said, no, you can't do that. You have to have someone behind the steering wheel that can take over control of the car. Because humans are so much more reasonable. <laughs> yeah. Well, but that's why, yeah. you know, with, when it says a car without a steering wheel, I'm like, that's kind of a big leap. I would still like to have the steering wheel in there because if I decide, hey, I feel like driving. Well, and well, but you'll notice that it says that what was it? Uh, they are at least as safe as existing yeah. vehicles, yeah. which aren't safe. <laughs> isn't isn't that kind much of a low of a bar? Barrier. Yeah, that's yeah. a pretty low fucking bar because <laughs> human reaction times, especially during inclement weather, yeah. are pretty fucking poor. Yeah. Okay, here's what I want to know. All right. So every generation, the previous generation has seems to inherit these rights to claiming that the next generation is worthless and lazy and, you know, stays at home too long and doesn't ever want to work and, you know, all that. If this happens and our kids get a fucking four by four where they just sit in the goddamn seat and program it to drive up a dirt hill, can I call them lazy at that point? Yes. <laughs> is, 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 does that, is that, well, does that earn us the right? I mean, cause this also brings in another question. Do you have to be 16 in order to, to uh, sit and like, Will there be a driving age? Yeah. If 20, the car it drives at 20, it's, no. it should be 20 now. If you're getting into a <laughs> self-driving car, if it's like an Uber, a no, self-driving Uber, yeah. you can be like, well, I'm 15 years old and I'm going to take an Uber. No, I think that'd be totally fine. You, but, can, take, you can do an Uber now, right? I mean, you, you can yeah. call Uber and they'll come and pick you up, take you wherever. So, but if you're not actually operating the vehicle, what says a 15-year-old can't jump in mom's self-driving car and let it drive him to soccer practice? Yeah, why not too? Why not? That's why I wonder if they'll have to change the laws on that to be. Yeah, why not two years old? That'd be fine. Yeah, that I might not agree with because at two years, I'm like, I don't even trust you on a fucking tricycle to find your way someplace. <laughs> <laughs> but well, that's but that's with the two year old in control. They would have absolutely no control over this. Yeah, but they got to they got to plug a passenger. in. They got to plug in their location somehow where they want to go. <laughs> is it is it really that hands off? Yeah, like it if, can if, be. Yeah, like if they're like the the uh, the Google one I saw is completely hands off. Hmm. Uh, the Tesla cars right now, well, actually, I think it's, I can't remember how long it is. It's like 15 seconds without any, without sensing you touching the steering wheel will automatically uh, start beeping and yelling at you to put your hand back on the wheel hmm. because that's the way the law is written now. Hmm. Yeah. But, it, but you don't, I mean, it's not, it's not something that's technologically required. Hmm. It's something that is legally, required. legally required. Yes. Yeah. Right now, which I saw something. And so where the technology is limited to that. Someone had like taken like a rubber band and like rubber banded like a sponge or something to the steering wheel. Just had a little bit of shifting weight to it. A so damp sponge. Yeah. So, so the car little, always yeah. thought there was something on it with a little bit of shifting <laughs> weight. <It's a> car <laughs> like, get your clammy fucking hands <laughs> off of me. <laughs> well, because I think, because you can't hold your hand completely steady. So it, it feels sure. those slight movements of your hand on the steering wheel or, or the weight. Huh. So I saw they had done something like that where I'm like, that's actually pretty smart. Yeah. Those things are brilliant, huh? Well, the car's not, but that guy was just, smart for Yeah, for I meant the cars, it. the, the well, I mean, sponge and a hand are exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think in inclement weather, you run into problems where I know that in, in dry weather, it's able to, you know, a lot of the sensors can read the, the painted lines on the road. Yeah. They can see signs, determine curvature. But if you're in a blizzard, like here in Utah. Or just a, 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 a downpour of rain. I've been in rainstorms yeah. where I've had to physically pull over and stop my car because I can't see. Oh where yeah, I'm when going. it's just when it's raining that hard. Yeah, even your wipers on high. Especially like, like out in the, out in the anything. plains, like going through the Dakotas yeah. or something. It's, oh yeah, I've had to pull over. Man. It's horrible. The yeah. Dakotas get hammered with storms. So that's well, why I wonder if the cars would have to do the same thing, or if they're gonna. Well, like how, I said, it, it, they works. have to be at least as at least, safe as, yeah. ex as existing vehicles. So, so if it you have, have to, know to pull, pull over, over, then the hopefully the vehicle the car's sensors to can't detect stop, anything, then yeah, it would pull over, pull over or stop. What if you and get if, what if you get the bro model that's like, no, dude, I totally got this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the hero model. <laughs> you see those people here in Utah? It's like everybody goes. You know, if, if it's snowing, they're either doing 20 miles an hour or 80 miles an hour. Right, and. The people who whiz by me on the freeway, I'm like, all right, I'll see you in a couple miles, hero. And sure as shit, they've oh, yeah. spun off the side of the road. Yep. Pass them. I was, I was in a car with my friends when I was like 20, 21 years old, headed to Provo during a hellacious snowstorm. 
and we had the same fucking Toyota 4x4 pass us three times on the freeway, and then we passed him three times on the freeway, spun off on the side of the road. And each time he passed us, it was like, all right, we'll see you in a few miles, yeah. hero. Dumb what an ass. idiot. <laughs> yeah, I had a, I think it was last year, one of those days where it took me four hours to fucking get home from work there, and it's, it was Christmas Day. Yeah. Uh, there was a fucking brand new uh, Camaro just driving sideways down I-15. You see, every time he touched the gas, you notice because he would straighten out, tap the gas, and go sideways. Straighten out, tap the gas, go sideways. It's like, dude, get your fucking car off of this freeway right fucking now. He's got racing slicks on the back. Yeah, it's like, you do not belong here. I'm like, we're all, we're all doing 15 miles an hour, but you can't even do fucking five in this fucking wet weather. It's fine. It's a Camaro, bro. Oh, I thought like I was a fucking douchebag in there. <laughs> This is Mithrin, author of the ABCs of Science and Mormonism, as well as I Should Start a Cult, and you're listening to The Godless Revolution. Thank you, Mr. President. Good. Lisa Desjardins from the PBS NewsHour. Good. On national security and immigration, can you give us more details on the executive order you plan for next week, even its broad outlines? Yeah. Will it be focused on specific very fair countries? Question. And in addition, on the DACA program for immigration, right. what is your plan? Do you plan to continue that program or to end it? We're going to show great heart. DACA is a very, very difficult subject for me, I will tell you. To me, it's one of the most difficult subjects I have because you have these incredible kids in many cases, not in all cases. In some of the cases, they're having DACA and they're gang members and they're drug dealers too. But you have some absolutely incredible kids, I would say mostly. They were brought here in such a way. It's a very, it's a very, very tough subject. We are going to deal with DACA with heart. I have to deal with a lot of politicians, don't forget. And I have to convince them that what I'm saying is, is right. And I appreciate your understanding on that. But the DACA situation is a very, very, it's a very difficult thing for me. Because, you know, I love these kids. I, I love kids. I have kids and grandkids. And I find it very, very hard doing what the law says exactly to do. And, you know, the law is rough. I'm not talking about new laws. I'm talking the existing law is very rough. It's very, very rough. As far as the new order, uh, the new order is going to be very much tailored to the, what I consider to be a very bad decision, but uh, we can tailor the order to that decision and get just about everything, in some ways more, uh, but we're tailoring it now to the decision. We have some of the best lawyers in the country working on it, and the new uh, executive order is being tailored to the decision we got down from the court, okay? If you have questions, comments, concerns, compliments, corrections, criticisms, or concepts for content, contact the show via email at godlessrevolution at gmail.com, by text or voicemail at 330-81-REBEL, or Twitter the twatter at TGR Podcast. Thank you! All right, so we would be remiss if we did not mention DACA in this episode, because that is the other big thing besides all of the fucking horrific natural disasters that are going on right now. Yeah, this is the biggest unnatural disaster. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Hurricane Trump is what DACA should be called. Yeah, so you all heard Donald Trump just talking about how much he loves the the, the these young people. Most of not all of them. Most of it, sometimes they don't send us the best. I love kids. Sometimes I love well, he did kids. that. He did that whole thing that he that he did with Mexico. The, the immigrants that are coming here. There's some bad hombres. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's always equivocating. Oh, yeah. He did that with the fucking Nazis. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good people on both sides. He, he both just, sides. He Mike. can't say. You know how many Hispanic drug dealers I know? None. All of them? None. Oh. How many non-Hispanic drug dealers do you know? That's the only kind of drug dealer I know. <laughs> cool. Well, anecdote is good enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, So, Trump... Was it this week or last week? It was this week. Was it this week? Ended DACA. Formally said, no, we're not going to do DACA anymore. He's punting it over to Congress, mm -hmm. to a Republican Congress who wants absolutely no fucking part whatsoever in immigration at all. Yeah. Here, but here's the good side of that. Just like the uh, transgenders in the military, him giving it to the general and the general saying, fuck you, Trump, we're still going to allow him in. Congress can do the same thing with DACA. Say, no, we're going to allow these people to stay. Mm -hmm. So DACA stands for Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, right? Yes. Which means that we're not going to 
automatically put people who were brought here as children by their parents on a deportation list. Yeah. We're not going to kick them out of the country just because they had no say in coming here and they've lived here their you know, for the yeah, majority this, of their this lives. Right. This is this is the only country that they can remember. It's their country. It's it's where they've grown up. It's where they're participating. I saw an interview of a first responder, I believe he was a fireman. Uh who uh, paramedic. Is, or, yeah, paramedic. Yeah, he's a paramedic. Yeah. Um who who is part of the DACA program who yeah. now because Trump ended it. Is, could be it deported. Could, could be deported. You're right to a country he doesn't know, where they speak a language he yeah. might not know. Here's the funny thing: like for years, Republicans have been whining about this America speak the language, right? And they don't even really speak English. But okay, all <laughs> yeah. right. So, so all of these DACA children do. They speak English perfectly, better than you. What all? I've got to have jobs. They do. All of them have. They all have jobs. Pay their tax. Yep, they have pay their taxes. They all pay. Their, they're all per- perfectly good citizens. They pay their taxes. Speak English. Uh, have you know basically are familiar with american culture whatever that may mean uh and almost no familiarity with any of their uh official home countries mm-hmm. um that's what we're talking about so so you know here we are again and i'm gonna have to say this every week we're in a situation where republicans or christians or whatever you want to say are ne- we're never going to find the end when enough is enough for them wh- mm-hmm. where the line is mm-hmm. it's just Keep pushing, keep going, keep more, more, more. They say these things, but then when they, when you meet all of their criteria, they just push for more. They yeah. just say, oh, well, no, we don't care about any of that. Yeah, they're now. never going to they, be satisfied. They, they were here illegally. So that means now yeah. that's a good justification. Yeah. It's just a constant moving of the goalposts. Mm-hmm. And well, we heard Trump say that DACA is complicated. It's just, it's just one of those complicated right. things. I have to work with politicians, yeah. don't forget. This is very hard for me, believe me. Yeah. yeah. Right, so right, right. Uh, let's let's see how complicated DACA actually is. Well, and just real quick before we, before we even do that. So he says that he has so much love and concern and he appreciates the DACA people. And about, Which is bullshit. All he had to do, you know, you know what he could have done? Fucking nothing. Right. Yeah. He could have done absolutely nothing. Exactly. And it would be better. And it would have been better, right? Yep. And instead, he chose to end DACA, punt it to Congress, who he knows doesn't want any fucking part of it. Yeah. Here's another thing, too, right? Like we're having all of these issues, right? We've got we're just coming off the heel, the heels of Charlottesville and 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 Berkeley, and we've got you know statue issues and flag issues, and we've got all this Russia investigation and the the constant uh, revolving door of 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 uh, administration uh, members. And and then all of a sudden, these two natural disasters, Harvey and Irma, are are hit the United States, right? And Trump has a chance. Uh, not not that this is ethical, you know. We're talking about human lives and 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 things that have been completely destroyed. But oh yeah, well, it, from and a it's political, not as if Trump is concerned with ethics anyway, right? But from a political standpoint, if he had any savvy whatsoever, he could take this time and really focus on relief efforts. Saying and doing the right things, being in the right places for uh, disaster relief, you know, aiding families, and recovery, yeah. recovery, mm-hmm. yeah. doing all of these. But instead, he kicks it right back into the culture wars we were in a week or two ago before Harvey ever hit with this DACA thing. Well, now, what the fuck mm-hmm. is wrong with you? Didn't he actually? Yeah. I thought it was the DACA thing. I remember hearing him say. The reason why he did it when he did it was because he thought it would get more coverage because of the hurricane. That is exactly what he said. Yeah. Well, it's going to get more coverage and more press if I do it now because of because of all of the yeah. news about the hurricanes. Which I thought I was like, are you Wait, fucking? He wants more press coverage on it. Yeah. 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 He wanted yeah. to bring it to the attention of more people and thought that he could do so if he brought it up now while all it of would the press get is better ratings. On, yeah. It would get better ratings if he did it now. Oh, well, ratings. Which yeah. when I, when I first saw it, I'm like, <laughs> when I first saw the, the verbiage of it before I heard him actually say it, I'm like, this has got to be the, a fucking onion article. <laughs> no. Nope. I mean, we live in the, uh, we have an onion president. <laughs> he really thinks the White House is the apprentice stage. Oh, yeah. 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 Which is why some people go in and out. So you were going to tell us more about the DACA program. Okay. So there's seven simple guidelines. Uh, one, you were under the age of 31 as of June 15th, 2012. Okay, that's easy. Okay. Uh, came to the United States before reaching your 16th birthday. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 
uh, have continuously resided in the United States since June 15th, 2007, up to the present time. Okay. Yeah. Uh, were physically present in the United States on June 15th, 2012, and at the time of uh, making your request for considera- consideration of deferred actions with the USCIS, had no lawful status on June 15th, 2012. So you had no lawful citizenship within the United States right. on that okay. date. Are currently in school, have graduated or obtained a certificate of completion from a high school, have obtained a general education development certificate, or are an honorable uh, discharge veteran from the Coast Guard or Armed Forces of the United States. Okay. Yeah, I agree. They should be able to stay here. Yeah. Uh, then here's the one that Trump d- probably doesn't like that's in there, or doesn't listen to having being in there because he believes these people are, are on DACA. Uh, have not been convicted of a felony, significant misdemeanor, or three or more other misdemeanors and do not otherwise pose a threat to national security or public safety. Well, and that just, that's just it, right? That covers what he said during the drop between yep, the segment, exactly. right? Exactly. Yep. Where he talked about most of them are okay. The, no, all the, of them are, are okay. okay. Yeah, In order to qualify yeah. for the DACA program, you all have to be because okay. Because if they're a violent criminal, guess what? They don't fucking qualify. Right. And, and, and beyond that, you know, the, all the, the stipulations ahead of that, uh, legal one were all about citizenship. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, citizen but when, when, you, when did you get you, here? How long? No, I mean, I mean, you know, yeah. having a job, paying your yeah. taxes, yep. being educated. You know, uh, all all of these productive yeah. societal member issues yeah. are also tied into this. So what we're doing is getting rid of some of the best of our citizens. Yes. Yeah. Which, if if anything, with that, I think the first three in there, which all deal with dates and ages of you being here, should be fucking expanded. Like that, that firefighter, there could be a firefighter on the job there. Maybe he doesn't qualify. He's too old, but he came right. here as a child. He's got an education. He's, he's a productive member of society. He's helping his community out. Mm-hmm. There's no legal actions against him. Never. He's a perfect citizen, but he doesn't qualify because he wasn't. Well, yeah, all the of right these, age when this was put into all place. All of these guidelines basically outline what we would consider a model citizen of yeah, the United yeah, States, right? Yeah, yeah. And he's going to say, "No, we're we're ending that. Yep. Why don't we expand that to the entire citizenry? Yep. If you don't, if you don't qualify for all of this, then you can be fucking deported somewhere else. Yeah. yeah. We're going to send you to fucking Antarctica. We're going to send you to Mother Russia. All right. <laughs> yeah. Which, I, 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 he, what he's doing is removing the most densely. Uh, the high, the highest concentration of our best citizens. That's what this yeah. is. This yeah. is a collection of the highest density of our best citizens in one group. And well, and, and the really shitty thing is when this person gets deported, they're going to get deported to, let's say, Mexico. Mexico will do a thing, go, well, they don't belong here. We don't have yeah, them we don't on know. our records. So they'll go down to Venezuela. Venezuela go, well, we, we don't have them on our records. They'll go to Panama. Panama will be like, well, we don't got them on our records. They're just going to get shifted all around South America and die yeah by the because way they don't belong to any of those fucking countries we're talking about just shy of a million people here yeah yeah so take a sample size of a million random americans and try to find all of these attributes and traits <laughs> yeah no in, shit. in a, uh even 90 even 50 percent yeah yeah that they've all completed school they're paying their taxes they have a job they're you know all of these Not wonderful criminals, things that, yeah, well, yeah that contribute right. to a to a growing healthy decent society mm-hmm. and Kick them the fuck out. Sure. Uh, it, it, like I said, all he had to do in order to be a decent president on this was What's fucking nothing. nothing. Yep. And instead he's like, no, we're going to, I love the dreamers, but you know, we're going to, we're going to, we're, I'm going to have Congress tell them that they have to go because I don't have the fucking balls to do it myself. Yep. I'm yeah. not going to yeah. do it. I'm going to tell Congress that they have to kick them out. Well, then the other thing is when it comes to him talking or, or peddling his shit to his fucking supporters, be like, well, I told Congress to get rid of them. They didn't, they didn't listen to me if they don't do it. Well, and for not being a politician, this is a great politician weasel way out of yeah. everything, right? He gets to appease his base. Yeah. And he gets to make Congress be the bad guys. Yeah. Here. Yeah. He's, it's a win win for him. Yeah. What a slimy fucking shithead. Yeah. And, and it's what the, he's good at. The, the, the thing about, I mean, look, I mean, we're, we shouldn't be surprised by anything Trump does, right? But 
I still am. I mean, it's amazing how fucking bad this guy can be. Uh, what 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 is the purpose of doing this other than to just be an asshole? Yeah, I can't think of any. I what's the good reason behind well, that? Well, I mean, well, other than appeasing, like other than appeasing his base, I can't think of any reason well, why he. That's would not to do a this. laudable goal either. I mean, well, yeah, well, no, <laughs> certainly not. But what? Well, all yeah, you I guess said the, was the what? Benefit what is for the, him? Yeah, yeah. yeah what is, what is I, the benefit I, for it? It it benefits him. It doesn't benefit anybody else. And that's all. That's all he's concerned no, no, about. I mean, is it benefiting hurt, himself. It hurts the country. He's a fucking narcissist. Yeah. He doesn't give yeah. a shit about anybody else. He really doesn't. No, no, of course, no, of course not. That about wraps it up for us this evening, though. Before we go, I want to thank all of our Patreon supporters. That would be Larry Wilson, Marius Butrakowski, Doctor Dan Matt's boss from the Two SC Podcast, to whom we pledge loyalty. Janet Uter, let them eat Kafefi, Stephen Andrus, Mo Calbell, Christy Kalbach. Megan Kennedy, whose video is out now? Yeah, yeah it's who's, out. Whose most recent video yep, is out? Uh, it's on the, the Satanic Temple's uh, YouTube page. Fantastic. You should all go out and watch that. Andrew Vodapich, Alicia Gerhardt, Brandy Hamrick, Jeremy Goodson, Angelica Pearson, Andy Faulkner, Utah Outcasts, Wes Aaron, and our top patrons, Mr. Taylor Grin. Fuck you and your I still don't qualify rules, Mr. Grant Larimer, <laughs> and Savita Kuna. Now, he said that that was directed at me. What did I say he didn't qualify for? <laughs> uh, oh, it was part of the the drawing that we were doing. Oh. I can't remember exactly. <laughs> he, needs to update oh, yeah. His, yeah. he needs to update his shit, man. And, of course, I can't forget, I'm sorry, Mr. Mr. Aaron Burton, the gay theist. Yes. Thank you all very much for your support. It does mean a lot to us. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as I've said previously, if you'd like to contribute to the show, we would absolutely appreciate that. You can do so by going to patreon.com slash godless revolution. Uh, you can contribute as little as a dollar per episode, and we would be ever so thankful. If it is a strain on you whatsoever, this goes for anybody who's considering a patronage or anybody who is currently a patron. Don't do it. If it's going to be a burden to you at all, don't do it. Hmm. But if you can afford it and you appreciate what we do and would like to show us a little bit of love, we would greatly appreciate you doing so. That's all I have for this evening. So until next week, crucify that like button. Leave a review to achieve nirvana. And rate the show five times a day toward Mecca. That's grinandbarrent.com. <laughs> We're going to move into the Patreon portion of the show right now. Jesus freak what? Storm warrior. She's like the Gandalf of storm fighting. <laughs> In, you shall not pass. If, when you see her, you will understand why. <laughs> There's been a whole lot of tragedy. Tra tragedy. I think you're referring to the. Tragedly. <laughs> <laughs> referring tragedly, to the, the Gret Brick. And <laughs> Go ahead. I had a couple of mess ups during my piece, too. So. Uh. So there's been a whole lot of tragedy around the world. I fucking started with so again. I hate when I do that. I'll remember this time. Mm. I'll remember this time. Ha! 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 Oh. It's time. Oh, that's a dad joke. Not a minute too late. <laughs> <laughs> I want dreamers to come from the United States. We should have dreams too. <laughs> yeah. Like he's only hearing his his own words. Yeah, yeah. Right, and then yeah, he, and there's this moment he's where like, he's oh like, God, "That was brilliant. that was so brilliant." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's totally what it sounds like. In some cases, they're having DACA. <laughs> oh, wait, did I say I meant Kaka? <laughs> I meant docking. <laughs> <laughs> they're gay. It's fine. I was gonna say is that. You know, there's this whole thing, especially with fucking Jeff Sessions and the way that he's talking about, there's a country of loot laws and rules. And we, if we don't enforce that, fuck you, dude, you have you, you two fuckers can't say shit about laws and rules after pardoning Joe Arpaio. Yeah, oh, yeah. No shit. No shit. Man. Fuck off with that. Maybe you can stick that in there somewhere. Yeah, I will. Yeah. Right in his cornhole. <laughs>